welcome to senior day here at Finley Stadium on a beautiful day in Campbellsville, Kentucky. You're taking a look at our honorary captains, Khalil Baker, who will has abandoned us here up in the booth for just a short second as he goes out as an honorary captain honored during his playing days back in way a long time ago, back in 2017 and a couple years prior to that. But Khalil, part of a very good team at 2017 year, so he's heading out there as an honorary captain. But we have a battle of the Tigers here today. I'm Colin Sheffield. Alongside me, Brett Sal and Khalil Baker will be up here momentarily. But the Tigers have their hands full with this Georgetown team. They come in ranked number 18. And this Georgetown team might be a little frustrated as they're coming off of a loss that was a little unexpected, perhaps, as they played the University of the Cumberlands just last week. And they lost that ball game. It was a score of 24 to 23. And so they slipped from number 11 all the way down to number 18. And it's a little unusual for this Georgetown team. So perhaps they'll come out with a little bit of fight here against this Campbellsville team. But this is also a Campbellsville team that desperately needs to get a victory. They're, they've slid six games now. They start out 2-0. and They're 0-6. They had a shootout down in Pikeville if you joined us for that game. It was a tough ball game and just a game of runs and Pikeville ends up on top. Some unfortunate things occurred, just some penalties, but now looking to take a big upset here on senior day and the final home game of this season. Yeah, I mean, you, it's, it's, it's Georgetown. You know, this is a, a rivalry game. We, we don't like them, they don't like us. And, and once again, you got a good opponent coming in and, and uh, you have to, to match that intensity and that level of intensity that they're going to bring coming off a loss, like you said, they're probably uh, pretty upset about that. Got a sour taste in their mouth. They're going to want to come out here and start hot early, and, and that's what we have to do. And so we have to um, try to take their best shot um, and then just make this a four-quarter game. Do what you have to do to, to make it a four-quarter. Give yourself a chance in the fourth. You know, we did that when we played Lindsey. Um, we're going to do the same thing here. You know, we, we obviously didn't get that one at Lindsay, but we played hard through the whole whole game, defensively especially. And that's what kind of game it's going to be today if we want to have a chance to win. We're going to have to play good defensively, not give up anything deep. Uh, last week, as you mentioned, was a shootout. Deep, no, neither defense could stop anybody. And uh, just unfortunate we couldn't get enough stops there to get the win in Pikeville. So excited to see last home game of the year. Excited to see how the Tigers come out. Senior day, you know, it's an emotional day. Um, so we just have to harness, control that energy and, uh, you know, let it make us produce something on the field. Tigers gained over 600 yards, and Gillis had an amazing performance. So did Siler. Gillis threw for 40 pass completions and 495 yards, had a few touchdowns in the process. So he's been a big spark to this offense that had seemed a little stagnant before having trouble moving the ball. And we see glimpses of that and we see some of the young starting quarterback mistakes. He's only played in a few games, but the upside with Gillis is just amazing as to how he's progressed so far this season. Yeah, Gillis has done a great job when he's been called upon since Meglis got hurt. <clears throat> and, you know, he, he's producing. You know, he's making some mistakes that young players make. But he'll get better as he gets more reps. And and so I've liked what I've seen from him. I've said that numerous times. His, just, his pocket of presence, his, his ability to keep his eyes downfield as the pocket's collapsing and, and finding guys late. I, you know, that's a good trait to have when you're a young player because usually that's what takes time to develop. So as he continues to get more reps, he's going to even get more and more comfortable in that role. And CU has, they won the toss, so they've elected to receive. So going to try to start out and get the offense moving down the field early on here. We welcome back Khalil Baker, the honorary captain for today's ball game, back up into the booth. Glad to be here. Such an honor, honestly, to be out there. It makes you think about, you know, everything I went through as a player, all the good times, all the bad times that we <laughs> talked a little bit about. You know, I got, got a little history at Georgetown, but hopefully we can get a, get a W today. So Sturdivant will take it. They'll fake the handoff, and he's got plenty of room. Oh, nice. Moving now past the 40, into the 50. Georgetown territory, Sturdivant. A little bit of trickery off the start as he fakes a little handoff. 
on the kickoff return and finds plenty of room down the sideline. Good blocking. And the Tigers will start out with great field position to start their first drive. Yeah, you know, our special teams have been really good this year, I, I think. Kick and return especially. Um, but go ahead, Khalil. Yeah, you know, Coach Abbott just loves throwing out those wrinkles like that. You know, whenever he can get a good kick return going, uh, everything's perfect out there for him. He loves to throw in those fake handoffs, those reverses. Just some wrinkle just to throw him off a little bit. So Gillis will start at quarterback. Bass to his left, trips out right, sends Odin in motion. Rolling to his left, looking downfield, hits Odin for a quick little gain as that'll move the ball up for an 11-yard gain. That'll move the chains for a Tiger first down. So if you pay attention to CU, we love our rollouts, you know, with the quarterback, you know, try to get some going into the flats or maybe even a corner out going over top. They kept number three right there, White, back a little bit. I, I guess that might be a little game plan wrinkle they're trying to throw out right there. Gillis. Drops back, looking over middle. Now sideline has pressure and gets taken down. I think the play was blown dead before that ball came out, but nonetheless, the Tigers fell on top of it. But that sack will move the Tigers back about four yards. What Georgetown really likes to do is they put a lot of pressure on their front four to make plays, cause pressure in the backfield, whether it's in a passing game or in a run game. And they drop a lot of guys back in coverage like we see right there. DJ White is a guy to look out for, number three, to cause some pressure. So let's see what he does this game and see how we can. Empty set for Gillis, and he'll take it right up the middle. He'll gain back about three yards on the play, so they'll be at the 34-yard line of Georgetown. Yeah, and that time White dropped in coverage. Um, and so they're going to mix up what they do on that front. You know, sometimes he'll come off the edge. Other times he'll drop back uh, and, and go in a zone, and they might bring uh, pressure from the other side or blitz a linebacker. Third and 11, stack receivers on both sides. Now pressure rolling right. He'll dump down to Trey Bass. Bass pushing forward. Won't get enough for the first down as he's pushed out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Decision time early. Go for it. This is a this would be a little bit of a statement. Go right. ahead and go for it. Looks like the offense stays out on the field. Fourth and five. Last home game of the year. Can't hold anything back now. I mean, you're two and six. You, uh, you got to get something going, especially on the offensive end. Gillis drops back in the pocket. Good, good. Throw sideline and has Tim Pope, the freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. He gains up to the 20 and a Tiger first down. That was a great job by the offensive line, giving him time to throw. So the Tigers pick up a pick up a fourth down conversion, move the chains. They're on Georgetown's 20. Gillis has Bass to his right. And I like what we did right there. We need to try to exploit matchups a little bit more. So if we see one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, let's go to that matchup and see what receivers can do. They'll hand off with Bass. Bass trying to find the hole, but he'll be taken down right at the line of scrimmage. This is a tough Georgetown front, as you talked about, Khalil. Yeah, it's a big front. They have a lot of size, a lot of strength, and uh, again, they put a lot of pressure on that front four to make plays. The linebackers uh, play very well off that, so you got a good front four. That's perfect for a linebacker. Play a lot in space. Uh, you don't have to worry about blockers as much. You can really get downhill and make plays. Empty set, trips out right, two to the left. Low snap, picks it up, fires it to Odin over the middle. He'll get up to the 12-yard line. No, make it third and two. Great job, uh, Odin, just to catch that, wrap both arms around it, turn, duck, and get upfield. You know, he's getting sandwiched between two defenders. You want to pick up as much as you can there and protect the football while you're doing it. Just a couple yards to gain for the first down. Gillis has Bass to his right, rolling to his right. Shepherson, and there's that look, and Rob Sheffield who's another big person to watch out for, the DB out of Mayo High School from Louisville, Kentucky. He just flies over there, closing speed, gets the hand in front of Shepherson and knocks that one away. And Devin Neely will come out onto the field to put three on the board for the Tigers in their opening drive. 
George Shep keeps five DBs out there pretty much all the time. Uh, I would love to see what the rate is as far as those packages go. I would also love to see their blitz rate too because they usually, you know, pr pressure with four, sometimes drop people out, bring someone else in like a linebacker, Brett said earlier. Neely with about a 28-yard field goal. And that one's up and good. So the Tigers will strike, well, Campbellsville Tigers will strike <laughs> first. I'm going to have to get used to that, a broadcaster's dream. But the Tigers of Campbellsville strike first. 11-11 left, 3 nothing. Campbellsville will be back with Fighting Tiger football on the CU Sports Network. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back as the Tigers put three on the board and they strike first. I think we figured it out. I'm going to roll with the Tigers when I speak of Camelsville, and we'll it. just call it Georgetown, Georgetown. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Hey, I love real that first Tigers, drive. Please stand up. <laughs> I love that first drive from CU right there. Uh, you know, taking what the defense gave them, you know, attacking some of that flat area, attacking some of those short passes and getting the ball out quick. We saw a little bit of pressure earlier on, but we were able to kind of counteract that and even get some points on the board. Tigers will kick away and Georgetown will get their first shot to bring their offense out onto the field. As Neely puts the boot to the ball. He'll take it from just inside the 10 and out running quick, has some space taken down by Jaden Brown, the freshman out of Florida. Yeah, going back to our offense, you know how earlier in the season we were a running team. We really wanted to establish the run to be patient with it. Uh, somewhere along the way, especially with the QB change, we kind of became more of a passing team, struggled to run here and there. Uh, so I love what we're doing. I love how we came out on that first drive. So I want to see how it, how it keeps up. I'm glad you mentioned that because a stat that I had brought up <laughs> before the game is that we are third in the nation in passing first downs. And we were considered a running team for quite some time, showing some pressure here early. Tigers bring four or five, a little delay, and good pass coverage there from number 23, Tayshawn Key, who was a receiver for pretty much the start and has kind of moved back into the secondary and playing in coverage today. That is Garrick Slunaker getting the start for Georgetown. He hands off. And Darius Neal on the carry. Yeah, Grover did a great job shedding his block and getting in that gap and then uh, really bring, bringing him down with an arm tackle. He wrapped one arm around him to get his other one free. A quick third down here as the Tigers look to get off the field early against this Georgetown offense. And shotgun has Neil to his right. Drops back, takes the hit as he throws, and a great catch made there by Frankie Lunga for the first down. Yeah, it's just a really good catch, a really good catch. I did not think he was going to bring that in. We got pressure pretty quick in the face of the quarterback, but man, just great catch. Slunaker. Sends his man in motion. That's Caden Mullins. Fakes the handoff, rolling to his right, throws, and that one into the Tiger sideline for an incomplete pass. We're seeing a lot of adjustments right now on the defensive side, uh, especially with number seven playing in the slot, Diego Brumfield. Uh, playing a little bit of slot, a little bit of monster for them, actually even on that uh, third down and long, coming off the edge and trying to bring some blitz pressure right there, getting back in coverage. So switching it up a little bit, letting, letting him play in the field a little bit more and also use his athleticism to make some plays as well. A big bunch of receivers here on the near side. They'll spread out now. A lot of shifting going around for this set. Slunaker. Hickens off. 
and finds his hole, but gets hit by D'Angelo Davenport. As he comes up, a gain of, looks like about five. And some more of adjustments we made is putting more DBs on the field, putting more pressure on our box. Uh, right now, three down linemen, we've got some linebackers in there with Jacoby and Abood, making them make more plays in the run game, stopping that and trying to help out our pass game a little bit more, pass defense. Empty set for Georgetown, trips on the near side. Solo man up top, looking his way, finds him towards the sideline, and wraps his up. His knee was down on the ground. I don't know why they didn't blow that dead. That'll move the chains for a Georgetown first down, and they're on the Tigers' side of the field on the Tigers' 42-yard line. Well, that's twice there on third and five or six that they've they've hit that little route, that little quick route on the outside to the left uh, on the single receiver side. Slunaker, you'll get offsides there for the Tigers, and we saw a couple offsides really bite the Tigers just in that last game against Pikeville, we saw the offsides on the punt that gave them that extra chance and then an offsides that led to a big gain. And those are the kind of mistakes. Something else that I had noted, Campbellsville is eight, or they average about eight penalties a game. And Georgetown is actually only fourth in the nation they only average about four penalties a game, only about 35 yards. So the mistakes can add up, especially against a team that tends not to make them. Sunaker has Neal to his right, trips to top, throws over the middle, has his man, gave an initial hit down low, but didn't go down, stayed up. Aaron Maggard goes for a first down. Yeah, we, we come down, we try to put a shoulder on the ball, but you got to wrap up too. You can't just throw a shoulder on somebody and expect uh, them to fall over. These are college athletes. Same formation for Georgetown. He's there on the Tigers, 27. Hands off with Neal. Neal cuts back up into this middle. He'll gain four or five on the play. Going back to what you're talking about, Colin, with the penalties. Yeah, Georgetown is a very experienced group right now, going no huddle, trying to catch Campbellsville off, off guard. Hands off with Neal once again, right up the gut. Gain a three on that run. They push forward to make it third and two. Bring in Cade Mullins been acting a little bit more as a blocker up there. And there he is on that left side. Slunaker hands off with Neal once again, pushing forward and just dragging the Camelsville defender with him. Powerful running from the 5'11", 190 sophomore. Yeah, and Georgetown is a group who's going to do some power runs like that. A lot of man-on-man -man blocking as well. They're going to pull those guards. And the running backs are, you know, very experienced as well. They're very good. They make a lot of plays in the run game, and they're good for Georgetown and what they do. Another first down for Georgetown. They're now on the Tigers' 13-yard line, threatening to score. Slimaker comes up, makes some adjustments since Isaiah Cobb in the backfield. He'll hand off with Cobb as he pushes forward. As this Georgetown team is just taking a liking to that run right up the middle. And they're having their way with this Campbellsville front. Yeah, getting easy four or five yards a, a carry right now. And, and, and we're bringing guys up to the line and, and really sending them. And when you run that play up the middle, you, you, better, you better get off your block. Moves Cobb to his left. Hands off with him once again. Bouncing off Campbellsville defenders and pushes forward. I think he's a yard short. He is. It'll be third and one. Jacoby Miguel back into the lineup. He was missing against that Pikeville Bears team. 
And as they keep doing this and getting closer, you know, to the end zone, I want to see us, you know, make some adjustments on the defensive line, bring out some more size, especially, uh, you know, having as many DBs as we have on the field, get some more size out there to sure up that run game. Two out top to the left. Hands off to Cobb. Cobb pushing forward, and he will score five-yard touchdown run for Isaiah Cobb. Yeah, you say he pushed forward, but we actually pushed him quite a few right there, right into the end zone. Yeah, we kind of jumped on his back from the backside and uh, brought him down. And, uh, you know, that's – we're getting a lot of, you know, linebackers tackling the running back because he's getting past that initial line, and we're chasing from that point. Extra point is up. And good. As Drew Raider knocks that one through. Not a super experienced kicker for Georgetown, but he makes that one good. Georgetown takes a 7-3 lead over the Tigers. 537 left here in the first quarter. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. Georgetown strikes the first touchdown of the game, 7-3. to three. Georgetown leads over the Tigers. 5.37 left here in the first quarter. Tigers itching for a win against this Georgetown team in the past 10 matchups. They're just 1-9. That last win coming in 2014, a 28-24 win. So Camelsville would love to pick up another win here against this team. Sturdivant out and running as he cuts to the far sideline, but runs out of room. Good coverage this time from the Georgetown Special Teams Unit. Yeah, back in 2014, I was actually not around for that game. Uh, I was out of town, I believe, but I heard everything on the radio, and it was probably one of the more intense games I've ever had to hear. Uh, a last-minute goal line stop. Uh, from the defense on fourth and down, fourth down. It was a great stop from us. Just haven't been able to really get back on the winning side against Georgetown, unfortunately. And I know what that, uh, that is all about. I was in my tree stand <laughs> while I watched the last few minutes of the game. Was Actually, great. was at the game. I left at halftime to get in the deer stand, and I pulled it up on my phone, and I was watching it and watched the end of it or listened to it. I don't, remember if, I don't know if we had video then or not. I don't know. Gillis hands off with Bass. And I think he'll only pick up a yard. Where were you when Kimmelsville <laughs> beat Georgetown in 2014? Second and nine. Ball on the Tigers' 19-yard line. Thanks for not bringing up my last loss against Georgetown, Colin. And I know it was probably hard for you to do. Oh, you're welcome. Do. I know. I didn't want to. Well, they want to humble you. You just, you, just brought, <laughs> you just brought it up. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not going into it. Something Gillis like hands or fakes the handoff, rolls out to the near side, throws over the middle, and Shepherson off his hands, and that was dangerous. Got to help his QB out. Jacob Brass dove out for that one. Luckily, that dropped to the turf, but yeah. that brings up a third and long situation. Shepherson's got to help his quarterback out there. He's got to come down with that ball, you know. Gillis is getting harassed and stops and makes the throw, and he's open. Man, he's got to catch that ball. He stuck with that corner route a little bit too long and saw Luke coming across a little bit late. Again, it's still a good ball with a lot of pressure coming on him. He just needs to really make that throw, and Luke needs to come up with the hands. Empty set. Gillis has pressure and gets demolished by about three Georgetown defenders as they were all over him. He really didn't have a chance once he got as soon as he came out of his about two or three step drop, he was already getting hit. Yeah, third down and long, 
a group that likes to pass rush. They are thinking just about pressure, getting a sack on the quarterback. So in those situations, it's going to be tough to get anything going, especially with a lot of changes on the offensive line like we've had. It's just uh, you have to really adjust and get the ball out quick and really help your quarterback out in that situation. Standifer and War Warner come up for the sack on that one. It's the Tigers punt out of their own end zone, Lopez. Booming punt that goes back to the 49-yard line on the opposite field and gets tripped up by number 35, Colton Hissong. That yeah, looked like a block in the back there. Uh, what called, maybe we were acting a little bit, I don't know, but I saw a hand extend. Too bad you're not a ref, Brad. I know, I wish I was. We'd get all the calls. <laughs> Georgetown. We'd get all the calls, man. Has good starting <laughs> field position for this drive as they'll start out on the Tigers' 37-yard line. Four minutes left here in this first quarter. The yeah, defense has just got to stiffen up a little bit right here in this run game, force them to throw the football. Sloonacre and Neal. Looking, throws over the middle, but that one too low and out in front of his intended target, J.C. Chagog. You know, something we struggle with all year defensively is getting pressure. You know, even when we bring more than four, uh, if we send five plus, we sometimes we still can't get home. And fortunately, this, the Georgetown's quarterbacks missed a couple. Second and ten. Hands off with Neal. Trying to find the outside. Good move on Davenport. He gets around him to pick up some extra yardage. 10-yard run will give a first down to Georgetown. Yeah, right there, Boog blitzes a little, a little delayed blitz and just gets blocked down right into the mess. And there's not really a lot of insurance out there once he's gone. On the Tigers, 27. Slunaker. Looking to the far sideline, picked off. Out goes Brumfield. Brumfield in a race, has one man to beat, and it's the quarterback. Big time, pick six. Touchdown, Tigers. Yeah, uh, I don't know what Georgetown's thinking. I'd, I'd keep running the football because it's working. Uh, but instead, they, they tried to throw a little quick out against our best DB. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's had his struggles this season. Uh, you know, we haven't really seen the, the same type of BB since the Lindsey Wilson game in that first half exactly. You know, but he's come on a little bit here uh, and doing a really good job for us in the slot and really has great instincts as a young guy. You know, we saw that right there with that pick six. Huge play from Brumfield. Hope to see a little bit more from him and his defense coming up here. Yeah, and that was huge. Tiger takeaway, Edward Jones giveaway. Thank you, Edward Jones as the Tigers pick up seven, thanks to the pick six from Diego Brumfield, picks up his fourth pick of the year, and it comes at no bigger spot than to make it a 10-7 ball game with 3.33 left in the first quarter. Tigers lead over Georgetown. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back. You see the replay of the pick six here. Diego Brumfield picks him off and runs it all the way back. I kind of want to see that back maybe one more time. But, man, that, that's just a hard pass to make for a quarterback, those short out routes, especially when, you know, Diego, he's, he's playing up a little bit. like So he's not backing off. And, again, he's a really good corner. Uh, he plays in phase a lot, like Brett said. And he's really good, so he's really good in space right there and did a great job for us. Just coming up with that pick six is huge. Nearly set to kick things off for the Tigers. So they have a 10-7 lead in the first quarter over Georgetown. Taken from about the eight yard line. Has some space and some running room, but taken down 
at the 32 yard line. So yeah, still, I'm not sure who that was, but I, they got hit hard. I didn't see the hit. Can't but see the number. They got hit, blocked hard. Might be number six, Travell Wright. So he took a hard hit. Trainers head out onto the field to take a look at him. Yeah, he's a really good kid himself. You know, he stays, uh, I'm an RD in Broadway. He stays in the dorm there. I got to talk to him a little bit earlier this week. You know, finally back healthy, uh, had some health issues, you know, the middle of the season. But again, a really good kid. So hopefully, you know, not too serious of an injury. And you see the look of that replay if you're following on our stream or on our YouTube at CU Sports Network. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll shout that out. But Tigers there and Brumfield just able to stay in motion, read it the whole way. We were talking about how the quarterback really gave it away, that that's where he was going. Brumfield just able to close the gap so quick, stay in motion, and that just takes him right into the end zone for the pick six. And a lot of the time you have, especially in you know college and leagues like this, like if there's a lot of predetermined passes. Uh, sometimes you just gotta you know be a football player and redirect. We'll get things back underway. Sunaker sends his man in motion. Rolling, he'll give a little shovel over to Cobb. Cobb cuts all the way back to the other side of the field. Norris, good piece of tackling there. Gain of four, second and six. It was a really good job from Kel Hangen, you know, to force him back inside. Just need to have some, some guy, someone containing. Adams moves over. Hand off with Cobb. He has a hole, and we'll see. Can Fant take him down or get him out of bounds? Gives him a push, and that gets him out of bounds. But the Tigers just beat on the counter, and that big run takes him to first and goal as he gets to the 10 yard line. Sunaker, first and goal. Moves Neil to his right. Hands off with Neal, trying to find the outside. And once again, another good piece of tackling by Nigel Norris. Yeah, and those formations right there, you know, they did a lot of that on the last drive and had a lot of success with it. You know, at a certain point, you know, as a football player, you have to register that in your mind. You got to remember those tendencies, and you got to be there to make the play. Use your instincts and make the tackle just like Nigel did right there. Tackle for loss. Still second and goal, but they lose one on the play. Ball on the Tigers, 11. Three out to the right. Throwing towards the back corner and has a touchdown with number 17, Aaron Maggard, his sixth touchdown of the season. That'll help give Georgetown lead over the Tigers. Not sure what happened on that. I don't know if it was broken coverage or just a good route ran. Yeah, there we saw Hakeem and, and you know trailing the receiver. I know and it was a corner route. I think they had some you know two guys on the outside coming in. Maybe that third receiver running a corner route. Really, maybe a really hard play for. No, it came to cover right there. I want to see a replay just to see what the look was. But. Yeah, I mean, it looked like we were a man just the way that he was chasing. Yeah. E extra and point. I'm sorry. Chase him across the field. Sorry, Colin. No, you're fine. Extra point is good. A minute and a half. We'll give our replay team maybe a second to find it. 14-10. Georgetown takes the lead. We'll be back with more Tiger football on the CU Sports Network. You quit smoking and thought, that's that. But here's the thing about lung cancer. By the time you see the symptoms, it could be too late. But now, there's a new scheme.
scan that can detect lung cancer early when it's more curable. If you smoked, get scanned. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. Take a look at that replay here and just cuts in. Yeah, exactly what I said. You know, you got a uh, number one and two receiver running ends, and then that third slot receiver going out for a corner route. It's a, it's a tough play to make. Uh, it probably made a little inside release right there as well, too. Just really difficult. Thank you. Especially not a lot of help out there, especially, but it's just tough. Sturdivant taking it himself. Cuts up the middle. And but yeah, whether he's going inside or outside release, he can go anywhere at that point, especially when you don't have help from a safety and you're not passing things off. It's a really di difficult one to pass off anyways. It's just tough at that moment. That's why, that's why I said, in my opinion, you know, just running man in that situation can be tough because you don't have help. But it's not like they're on the one where you have the boundaries on the, on the you know, that back of the end zone that can be your your help, you know, over the top. So it's a lot, that's a lot of space for a guy to cover. Um, and plus, I mean, Georgetown's been running the ball well, so you gotta account for that in some type of capacity. Gillis, little jet sweep action with Shepherson. Shepherson trying to get to the outside, didn't really have the blocking in front, having to shed off DJ White. That go is out really of bounds, good from, from Luke right there to you know get the edge. Didn't exactly have it, but made a way for it. Kind of faked back inside and went back outside, and almost you know came over five yards right there. Yeah, I think he probably could have cut up field a little bit earlier. To be honest with you, and got five steal, if not more. He kind of made. It, he took the harder route. Yeah. Um, good run but on still first down. Game. Gillis steps up in the pocket over the middle. Has Odin. Odin now running. And Sheffield will trip him up, but they'll get out past the 50 to the 48 of Georgetown and a Tiger first down. Yeah, great ducking skills by the umpire there because uh, he was about to get nosed with the nose of the football. Empty set, Gillis, quick throw, has Shepherson. You know, about two plays ago, you know, they kept number three back in coverage and, and sent a guy from the outside there. I am shocked when they, you know, when they choose not to ever bring him, honestly. I, he brings a lot of pressure. He's really going on the outside. Uh, he got a sack on the first drive or second drive. Uh, again, I, it's just uh, I would bring him almost every time. Smith moves to the left of Gillis. Quick screen to Shepherson. Shepherson cuts up, takes a big hit at the end of the first quarter, but the Tigers will move the chains for a first down. When we come back, they'll be on the 37-yard line of Georgetown as that Georgetown leads 14 to 10 over the Tigers. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. See that quick hitter over the middle to Patrick Odin there on the replay. And just able to make a break a few tackles. Sheffield able to take him down there at the end. Good gain as the Tigers move up to the 37 of Georgetown. Pick up a first down on that play. And once again, we just talk about the pocket presence of Jagger Gillis. He had pressure all around him. It was collapsing and he still stayed focused, stepped up into the pocket and made that throw over the middle keeping his eyes downfield, finding open. Yeah, he, I mean, he's really patient, and that's what you want out of a quarterback, a guy who's going to go through his reads and, you know, move off quickly when he, he, when he doesn't have the look he wants. So Gillis will start with Smith to his left. Throws for Siler, but that ball well out of bounds. Yeah, Siler, we hadn't heard or seen much from him yet this game, and Kind of looked like he was getting a little held and stuff slowed up that route. Uh, so I think that's his first target of this ball game. Ball that's just overthrown. Would have been a tough catch to make anyway. 
Smith to Gillis' right. Trips out here to the near side. Screen play to Odin. And not able to really get a good block out there as Georgetown read it all the way. Shepherson did as good as he could to hold off the one defender, but Georgetown just did a good job of closing in on Odin. That one only gets a gain of one, third and nine. You're kind of in that no man's land here, so you need a little quick five or six right here uh, to give yourself maybe a, a chance to think about going for it on fourth down. 14-25 here in the second quarter. Gillis gets tripped up. Felt the presence, he was starting to move out, but just in time, slipped it was Isaac Wallace, the senior defensive end for Georgetown, and brings him down for about a four yard loss, three yard loss. And that's when his being young kind of, you know, we talk about how patient he is, but he's also too patient at times. And he just kind of stays in there, he stays in there, he's waiting for somebody to get open, when if he would have just left the pocket and bought himself some more time. He probably could have found somebody down the field, but he stayed in there, and it allowed the guys at second, third effort to finally get him. Tigers will punt away, and a false start yeah. is called. That one on Chance Calvin. Still fourth down. They back up five yards. I'm going to say that was on purpose just to give the punter a little bit more room. Wink, wink. I don't know if that's true, but... He'll punt away from just inside the 45. That one going to the 12-yard line. Now, if we'd have stayed where we were, we'd been at the two. <laughs> another, <laughs> another punt for Lopez that goes inside the 20. Yeah, great. Lopez has been pretty good all year. Like I said, going to the special teams for the most part has been really good this year. Um, we've had a, maybe a punt block a couple times. Uh, but, like, other than that, we've done pretty well uh, returning and defending. Georgetown. Slunaker hands off with Neal. He pushes up to the 18, a gain of eight, or a gain of six, excuse me. Yeah, they got a lot going for them uh, in the run game right now. And, you know, Brett said this earlier. You know, why? Why would you start passing? At, you know, at before that pick or after that pick six from Diego. But right now, yeah, the run game is going for them. CU has to do something to stop that and get some pressure. Sunaker sends a man in motion. That's Maggard. So he goes out the far sideline, but they hand off. And that's a missed tackle by Dillard. And thankfully, number 22, Donsing Knox, able to grab him by the ankle and take him down. He had plenty of real estate to run. That might have been a touchdown run had Knox not been able to get there. Yeah, we can't just come flying, flying down the, the middle trying to hit somebody without wrapping up. Slunaker in the pocket, throws for the deep ball. Near side, great defense, and a pass interference called. Well, I'm assuming it's a pass interference, I guess. But that's number 23, Tayshawn Key in coverage. I thought it looked pretty good to me. Put his hands up. I didn't really think that he initiated contact that was unreasonable. It's a tough call. They typically like for them to get their head around um, in a lot of situations like that. It, you know, he got his hands up. He was in position. Yeah, I understand that. But at the same time, he's he's recovering because he's Take a beat. look at that replay there. And I, the, I mean, I guess the receiver did have to try to come back for it a little bit, ball Barely. underthrown, but not much. And, but, and you see that a lot uh, here recently, you know, especially like in the NFL, a lot of people trying to underthrow balls. And Slunaker gives one out in the flats, out and running. That's a hold. And that's number 14, Ladarian Montgomery. I mean, they were holding, straight up holding on the outside. 
and didn't call it. Who was that? That was in coverage there. Georgetown going a little bit of a quicker pace here. Flag thrown. You'll get a false start on Georgetown, so that'll back them up. They were on the Tigers 37, that'll push them back to the 42. First and 15 now for them. Yeah, it was Tayshawn Key that was on the outside that was uh, trying to make that tackle off that swing pass. And I mean, <laughs> the receiver was literally jerking his jersey, yanking it. So I know we'd get all the calls if I was the ref. I know. <laughs> Just under 12 minutes left in the first half. Georgetown leading by four. Sends Neal out. Quick throw. Gains about three on the play. Someone went to Dylan Warren. I really like that play from Georgetown as well, you know, getting the running back out there in space, uh, getting a guy outside of the box on uh, our side for CU and coming back with the screen on the other side. Slunaker, hands off. That one was Cobb in the backfield that time. Just a really effective way to get the numbers you want for blocking purposes uh, so you can get in space a little bit. And it was a decent game for them, especially being behind the six already. Third and 10. Big chance for the Tigers to get off the field. Force a fourth down. Slunaker. Neal to his left, drops back. Looking over the middle, has his receiver, it's caught. Knox able to come up with the tackle, but that pass goes to the 15 yard line as they find Maggard once again. Yeah, he's just got too much time to throw, man. Hurry up offense for Georgetown. He'll hand off with Cobb as he puts one up the middle. And I think we're attempting to get pressure uh, but we're not getting back there, you know, quick enough, obviously. But, you know, there's also not any safety help over top as well. So, you know, got, there's a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of room for air in, that, in those senses. No, when you don't have help over top and you're bringing people, you've got to, you, you've got to get home. Because uh, if you don't, then everybody's out there. Your DBs are on an island and you can only cover for so long. It doesn't matter how good you are. As a defensive back, you can only cover a receiver for so long. And we talk about how it's a penalty if you don't get your head around and they call pass interference. It's hard to play this position. It's it's set up for failure. And so you if you bring pressure and you got no help, you've got to get home to help your guys out on the back end. Second and six. Ball on the Tigers 11, sends Maggard in motion. Hands off the other way with Neal. Neal running free, and he'll break the goal line for a touchdown. As Georgetown goes up 10. Just inside 10 minutes left in the first half. Those lights are bright. <laughs> Drew Raider. Drew Raider. Attempting his third extra point of the day. That one's good. So Georgetown goes up 21-10, 9.50 left in the first half. You're following Fighting Tiger football on the CU Sports Network. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. Welcome back, you take a look at that touchdown run there from Neil. Was pretty much untouched all the way to the goal line. And, and yeah, Diego's there to, you know, help set the edge a little bit. But, you know, again, he is 
uh, typically a, he's a cornerback and what he's six foot you know 190 and you know he's going up against number 77 who's 6'5 345 there's not a lot he can do in those situations of course you need a little bit more from your defensive lineman your defensive tackle your ends uh, but maybe even bringing down a, another fourth down lineman there would help out in those situations and, and take him out of those situations to get exploited in that way start event on the keeper and he gets to, looks like they're spotting at the 15. Yeah, that little fake end around to start the game, you know, it worked and it threw Georgetown off guard. Now we just gotta get north and south. I mean, we got, this is the, what, third time we've started inside our 20. And uh, you can't be backed up against this team. You need to find some good field position. Georgetown done a good job in coverage ever since that first return from CU. Gillis, does that snap come, came early and low, goes under the legs, and they'll mark him at either the one yard or the half a yard line. And just went from bad to worse. Yeah, that was a, that was a stem from Georgetown, and I think it threw the center of you know, favors off just a little bit. The snap came super early for him. Just that little motion right there from the defensive lineman can really mess up the you know, entire offensive line in some ways. So second and forever for the Tigers. I wouldn't drop number three now. Gillis. He ain't on the field. Steps up, throws, sideline, and incomplete. It's Pope unable to keep it through the turf. So third and 24, ball inside the one yard line. Got all sorts of plays for this, third and 24. <laughs> On the one? I'd give Siler a chance right here is what I'd do. Move Smith to his left. Gillis throwing and that one picked mm. off. Siler unable to make the tackle and a pick six coming from Kyron Simpson, his third interception of the season. Yeah, Siler and Gillis were not on the same page there. Siler was running a, a go, and it looked like Gillis was trying to throw some kind of back shoulder or something. Yeah, he was expecting Siler to come back to the ball right there, but he, you know, he ran that go route and was expecting to go further downfield. And like you said, I would prefer that, try to take a shot downfield. Of course, you want to get some yardage, get off the one yard line so your punter doesn't have to kick it or punt it from the one. But now that pick six there kind of just takes out of the equation. Yeah, and I, go ahead, Colin. The extra point is good, 9.08, 28-10. Georgetown starting to pull away. We'll see if the Tigers offense has an answer when we get back after this short break. You're following Tiger football on the CU Sports Network. <laughs> If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Come back as you take a look at that pick six there. Well, I'm sorry, that's not the pick six. That one was the throw before. That was Tim Pope. Incomplete pass. He just couldn't hold it through the turf. But the Tiger offense looking to get set back up and try to respond here as Georgetown has just gone unanswered. It was 10 to seven, Campbellsville leading after the 80 yard pick six from Diego Brumfield. And ever since it has been all Georgetown as they've gone on a 21 point run. That kickoff goes out of bounds. Heads up cheerleaders. That was a really good job actually. She ducked that and she wasn't even looking. That, that, ball, can, that ball can do a lot of damage. My, uh, my sister-in-law was actually standing in a high school football game behind the goalpost, took the ball off the head, had a minor concussion. So there you go. 
the more you know. It's dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah, you're, you're not safe anywhere. <laughs> Just, you're not. So when the you, Tigers will get better starting field position than they've had in a short while as they'll start out their own 35. They'll try to create an answer for the 21 unanswered here from Georgetown, 9.08 left in the half. He'll hand off with Smith. Smith trying to push through, pile moving. And surprised that wasn't whistle dead sooner than what it was. It seemed like it had really stalled out. But a gain of one on the play brings up second and nine. Yeah, this is a huge drive. I mean, you've got to get some momentum uh, going here. You know, he started out pretty good offensively. You know, well, I mean, you've got the pick six, and you got, had an early lead, uh, but now we've got to stop the bleeding. Gillis throws back shoulder for Pope. Pope comes up with a big catch on the far sideline to take it into Georgetown territory. The way he threw that ball, I thought it was Siler over there, but it ends up being the freshman, Tim Pope, takes them inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. I mean, if you're going to throw up a prayer, throw it to Pope. You know oh what I'm saying? No comment. Hey, y'all can pay me for that later. I'll pretend to be amused. Gillis throws one to Zach Cole, the tight end getting involved now as he moves inside the 20-yard line, forced out of bounds at 16. Should I get my little Zach Cole spill? I give it every game. Uh, of course. I wish he'd get more involved <laughs> in this offense. I'm telling you, I'm some tight end, some tight end you. Gets the tight end some love, man. Yeah, tight ends are, you know, they can be very pivotal in an offense. Sometimes you don't see them coming. Uh, Zach Cole, uh, he's, a, he's a very good target. He's very reliable, very good in the run game as well. You know, give them some love, just like you said. Second and three. Man running free, Sheffield lays a hit out on Gillis, Gillis able to get the ball away. Incomplete pass, and I thought he saw that. Guy. I, I would have, I would have thought that it's not like it was coming from the blind side. Yeah. So I really thought that he saw Sheffield running free, uh, but it, yeah. he held on to that ball for quite some time and almost looked shocked when he got there. Yeah, he never saw it. Yeah, by the way, a couple plays ago, I would have went right back to Tim Pope in that matchup, and they gave him one on one again. You know, the guy is 6'3", 200 pounds. You know, give him another shot and try to get in the end zone here. Again, exploit those matchups. Give your receivers a chance to make a play. And this might be one right here. Odin in motion over to the right side. Nope. Now rolling to the right, looking for the back corner there to McCown, but that falls incomplete. So that'll bring up fourth and three. And... Man. Go back to him. I'd say to Gillis Pope. was on the sideline, but Neely hadn't ran out yet. There he comes. So the Tigers will attempt the field goal and look to answer at least some of the points and make some of it back up here. About a 26. Well, sorry. Kicking from the 23, so about a 33 yarder. Ball's up. And good, so they'll put three on the board. 28 to 13, Georgetown with a 15 point lead, 736 left in the half. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Take a look. That big catch from Tim Pope going up, and making the grab over Tico Sutton. And Tigers put them right in field goal range. They get stopped. So they'll put three on the board and answer that 21 point run from Georgetown. Neely will kick things away for the Tigers as they trail by 15. 
But this is an unfamiliar territory for the Tigers. And a flag on the kickoff. Probably an offsides. As the man is running free. And Neely takes him out. And that is number five on the return. That's Dylan Warren. And you'll probably get the offsides, as you mentioned. You know, going back to the offensive end, you know, we talked about it. I, I, I'm talking about it, at least. I am harping on it. <laughs> you know, exploit those matchups and give your receivers a, a chance to make a play on the ball. We, we talk about you know, on that replay, the offsides on CU right here. You, know, you see immediate flag on the kickoff. You, you got to know it's offsides. But again, Tim Pope is 6'3", 200, and you got the cornerback who's on him, number 26 Sutton. He is 5'9", 170. Uh, that is something you got to attack. If they're not going to give him help out there, keep seeing what's going there. Uh, so right after we do it on the first play, I want to go right back to it. They're going to give us that look again. Five yards added to the end of the run. So Georgetown will start from the Campbellsville 40. This team does not need help in starting field. Slunaker has Neil to his right, trips out top. Hands off. I'm sorry, that's Cobb. Cobb trips up, and he'll gain two, second and eight. Yeah, our line's got to shed their blocks. They've got to get in to the gaps because, really, they had a big hole there. It looked like the running back just kind of tripped. As they'll look back to the sideline, and get the play. Slunaker throws and finds his intended target. It's number 84, Frankie Lunga. Yeah, I mean, Nigel was right there. He's usually the corner, but he's uh, you know, showing the blitz pretty early. And, you know, they saw the look the entire time. In that situation, I'm, I'm if I'm coach, I might even call. I'm not coach, you know, whatever. But if, <laughs> I might call up that blitz right there and have him, you know, try to rob that little flat route right there. You know, again, they're, they, they know you're blitzing. They're going to get the ball out quick. They're a good, disciplined team. Big third down, third and three. Maggard in motion. Counter run right up the gut. Cobb takes it and continues spinning yards after contact from Cobb and Neal have been tremendous this game. They could have drove a semi-truck through that hole right there. So that'll move the chains. I mean, that counter caught everybody on the defensive side for the Tigers off guard. On the Tigers, 17. First and 10. Sends Warren in motion. Reads his progressions, throws, and finds Chagog for a quick gain of five. Second and five. Slunaker. Hands off with Cobb. Cobb has his blockers out front and pretty much untouched all the way to the end zone. Once again, great blocking out front. Yeah, I mean, they're just kicking us out on the edge right there. And there's not you know, a lot of uh, setting the edge going on. There's not a lot of squeezing either. We're just being kicked out, and that's creating a huge hole for the running backs to run through. And they're doing a good job you know, finding the holes, uh, even in those counters, those power, uh, power runs. Pulling guards are doing a great job right now executing in the run game. I think that was Peyton Bartley out front for Georgetown leading the way. Good blocking from him as that feel, or as the extra point is up and good. 35 to 13, just under five minutes left. In the first half, you're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, 
Chances are, you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Welcome back as you see that replay there. Bartley just out in front. The big blocks and Cobb rushes that one in. That's Cobb's second touchdown of the day. 107 yards for him, as long as being 54. And Neal, pretty even running, as Neal has 10 attempts but for 65 yards and a touchdown. So getting it done on the ground here is Georgetown, which is a little different for them. Fair catch signaled. So they'll start the 25 yard line. I mean, yeah, a lot of what they're doing right now, just when they're, when they're in the pass game, is attacking the middle of the field. They don't see safeties up there or you know, post snap match in the safety there. They're attacking the middle, trying to get inside and make a play there. And in the run game, we just, you know, we got to set the edge and, and we got to you know, squeeze things. And the running back just has too many lanes to go through right now. So Gillis has Bass to his right, trips here on the near side. See that shift, another low snap, handed off to Bass, and he'll only gain one on that one, second and nine. The Tigers, second and nine, 430, and counting down here. The end of the first half. Odin comes across in motion. Throws and has White who gets up there and knocks that one away. DJ White with that pass break up. They say that guy's pretty good. DJ White, a 6'4", 250 senior out of Madisonville, Kentucky. He gets it done. Empty set, third and nine from their own 26 yard line. They bring the receivers in. Low snap, once again, Gillis has to run out. He'll tuck and run, he'll gain, he'll get the first down, so great decision there from Gillis, we talked about it earlier. He had a little bit of a struggle there, took the sack rather than getting out into that open space, being too patient that time. Good decision to tuck and run, gets the first down and keeps the drive alive for the Tigers. Yeah, and you like to see that from a quarterback, you know, learning as you go, you know, hey, I've got, I've got this space out here. Let me go outside. If I find a guy, great. If I don't, I'll just tuck it and run. Gillis. Finds, I believe that's Pope. Once again, maybe not, it is. And that looks like Shepherson a little shaken up on the play. He's slow to get up. Not what you want to see from one of your star wide receivers. He'll walk off under his own power though. So always a good sign. Just a little shaken up. Second and two, ball on the 45 yard line of Campbellsville. Gillis has Bass to his right. Rolling out to the near side, looking downfield and he'll just have to throw it away. Pretty good coverage downfield from what I saw. I want him to try to, you know, attack that backside on the rollouts. You know, I know we haven't really done that at all this season, uh, but I think that is a look that's there when they're going those back, uh, those rollouts. It's not something we've done before. Just break some tendencies and give it, give Georgetown a different look. Yeah, it's something to think about. You know, 
Bash lining up. That slot position. Tucks and runs on the quarterback keeper. He'll gain the first down, lower the shoulder. Aggressive play calling there on third and two. He'll pick up a first down. I haven't seen too many quarterback keepers from Gillis. Good one there. As he pushes forward, would not be denied that first down. Keep things moving as you'll get a false start on Tim Pope. Over on the far sideline. That'll back the Tigers up. Back onto their side of the field. And obviously you don't want to do that in, those, in these situations. You're probably moving the ball down the field, getting a little you know, rhythm, getting a little momentum going, and then you have a mental lapse and you do that. That's just really tough on an offense. And now it's one and 15, it's just tough. Gillis sends Bass out of the backfield, finds him, now cutting up, had the block out front. That sounded like helmet to helmet, and I can't believe that that wasn't a targeting. And you can hear, well, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it, the coaches hollering for helmet to helmet. You can hear it from here, and He's slow to get up, so we'll take away, we'll step away and take a quick break. 35-13, Tigers lead, you're following, or er, Georgetown leading. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the Senior Sports Network. You see the replay of that hit as Bass was moving up, and that is crown and pushed right into the helmet of Trey Bass. So targeting, if I've ever known the rule, not called there. Gillis in the pocket, throws over the middle. There's a flag down, and Cole unable to reel it in, but there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Holding will be the call, looks like. That's the second targeting that's been missed here at home. If you don't remember the crackback block targeting call the last time we were at home against Bethel. And yeah, we got nothing. And nothing, for that. nothing on this one. Once again, another penalty flag coming out against this Tigers offense will push them back. Yeah, you, you talk about Georgetown and, and how few penalties they have. And if you look at all the good teams, and I guarantee it, the top top teams in, in the nation, they're not beating themselves with penalties. Second and 18 from their own 38. Smith taken down for a loss of yards. Trying to run a little bubble screen action. Smith coming out of the backfield. Bubble screen is the best term for what that play was. But an empty set for Gillis here in a third and 22 situation ball on their own 35 yard line. A minute 40 counting down in this half. He'll have to scramble and gets laid out. Number 23 got there first. That's Peyton Standifer. Yeah, and I know in those situations he wants to he wants a big play. He wants to get, you know, all the you know the 18 yards he needs to get for a first down. You know, but in situations like that you gotta take what the defense gives you, especially as pressures in your face and just get the ball out and live for another day. But right there just takes another sack and just not worth it. Timeout taken. We'll take a quick timeout as well. Georgetown leading 
35 to 13, you're following Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? Or in how many years do you want to retire? To get free action items customized just for you. Get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org. I'm back as the punt team will head out there. As Lopez will have to kick it away on a fourth and 27. He'll kick away from inside the 20. Yeah, at a certain point, they were at the 50 yard line. I was like, man, this is a really good drive. I didn't say it out loud because I didn't want to jinx us, but. Looks like you might get it. There's a flag back. All these flags. It's fielded at the 35. See what the flag is. Offsides. But again, and not just a good drive because we were actually moving the ball down the field, but a, a good drive because we were able to milk the clock a little bit. Uh, and you, you don't want to be in a position where you give Georgetown the ball back, especially with a minute and a half left. You know, and the offense has just been rolling. They've been doing a lot of whatever they wanted to do, especially running the ball. So you want to, to keep the ball, focus on ball control, get down the field and get some more points on the board. But again, those penalties, man. Starting at the 35-yard line. Gives a pitch out and a reverse here as he'll find the sideline here on the near side. And that was Chagog. Yeah, you can see that reverse from a mile away, especially if you're the backside corner in that situation. You see your man, you know, take off like that behind the line of scrimmage, you need to be yelling out reverse. So second and two on the gain of eight. Ball on the Georgetown 43-yard line. Quarterback keeper. He's taken down, tackled by Calvin. Gain of about a yard. So third and one. Man, if he could just get Georgetown just to make a mistake here real quick, try to score before half if you're, if you're the Tigers and Trying to get the jump. Good job from the Tigers' front line to stay disciplined. Third and one. Slutenaker hands off. Patient running, but the Tigers able to stand up the running back. I think that's Neal. It is. A great stand from the Tigers, but 23 seconds just remaining in this half, so not much to do with it. But they'll take a timeout. We'll take one as well. Georgetown leading 35-13. to 13. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Welcome back. Tigers force a fourth down, fourth and three. 23 seconds remaining on the clock here in the first half. Georgetown up 35 to 13. Hunt team comes out for Georgetown. Yeah, that's a really good way for the defense to end up in the first half, you know, finally getting some stops. 
punt is up and away. Bounces out of bounds about the 30 yard line. So the Tigers will start at the 30, 17 seconds left. Brett, are you trying anything here for the offense? Man, no, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, you sound upset. Yeah, I thought if it was closer to a minute, you know, you could do a little bit more. You just don't have, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, maybe you try something quick, maybe a delay, see what happens if you get some yards, maybe. But Gillis. Shovels it to Smith, but he bobbles it. And it'll hit the turf. It's an incomplete pass. Yeah. 12 yeah. seconds left. Let's just go to half. <laughs> Let's go to half and regroup. Regroup. <laughs> Make some adjustments. Regroup. Let's get some icy hot on. Get ready to come back out. What's the icy hot for? <laughs> I, I need it. <laughs> Gillis says Smith to his right. Trips. On the near side, another low snap taken almost off the turf. We've seen plenty of low snaps, not really getting into the stomach or chest of Gillis. Yeah, Favors uh, is a newly converted offensive lineman. Yeah. Originally plays defense lineman for us, uh, but plays center. He's he's done a, you know a decent job, a really good job uh, for the circumstances. Just needs to you know, work on those snaps. I know he's had a, a week of trying to work on that, especially. Gillis, same play, but the shovel pass is blown up by number 54, Chad Holleran, Georgetown's yeah. leading tackler. The play before that, Sturdivant. Georgetown man, takes a timeout. Has to catch the ball there, Sturdivant does on that play before that on third, uh, second down. Uh, probably would have had a first down and might have had a chance to throw it deep to in the half, but a couple of couple of uh, drops today uh, that, you know, really haunted them. Khalil, what kind of adjustments are we thinking here for coming out of the half? Well, it was really encouraging to see the defense actually get some stops on that last drive, you know, stopping Georgetown, you know, forcing them to punt. Uh, it's really good to see that from them. You know, of course, the defensive line just has to, you know, you know I say the defensive line, but the box has to get some penetration. We got to start squeezing on the edges here. So I don't know if you bring down an, another, a bigger body, but you know that monster position, or if you bring in, you know, an, another defensive line and kind of sure up those edges a little bit more. But the defense has to get something together here, especially and on offense. You know, I want to take some more shots. You know, we are. Two and six, of course, you want to get back on the winning side here, but, but I, I think it's a good time to try some things, uh, try some matchups and see what you have there and see what you have in some of these guys like Tim Pope and, and some others. Lopez will punt away. Three seconds left in the half. He'll just keep it and let time run out. Dang. Smart play, Smart. I think, from the Tigers there. And we've got a fight here at midfield. And there was a there were punches thrown on that one. So flags came flying in everywhere. Yeah. Was that 22? That 20? was number 45, McLennan Duncan for us. 20. I didn't see our our player. The half is over, but I'm gonna have to imagine a few unsportsman likes will come out. So McClendon Duncan was involved in that one. Is it number 26? Not or sure. 28 of who on, Georgetown uh, or who Georgetown. we were. Let's see. We'll get the call here once it's all sorted out. But we were looking downfield. Good job from us not allowing a chance for it yeah. to be returned on a punt return touchdown. You know, chances are slim, but never none. have those numbers reversed. So yeah. it's Tico Sutton and Unsportsman likes for the both of them. And we'll go ahead and we'll take a, there's the correction. So we'll take the quick break and we'll be back with halftime coverage here. 
Georgetown leading 35 to 13. You're following Fighting Tiger football on the CU Sports Network. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. drive an hour to cheer them on as they get beat 11 to nothing in the rain, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Welcome back as we are at halftime. Senior night taking place here. They honor the football players before the game, now honoring the band here at halftime. So, you know, just a congratulations to all the seniors that have made it through. But we'll talk about this football game as the Tigers trail 35 to 13 to Georgetown College. I think one of the big things here, we usually define ourselves as a running team. And here tonight, we really don't have very much in terms of rushing yardage. A lot of sacks also knock that number down a little bit, net yardage. But very primarily passing and coming off the back of really the freshman, Tim Pope, who we don't see usually honored in that kind of way. Not many targets coming his way. Yeah, I'm not upset that we're, you know, starting off the pass game and we're trying to run our offense through the passing game. I want to see us take some more shots, uh, give our guys like Tim Pope, Luke, uh, Siler, some more chances to make plays and really challenge these DBs that Georgetown has. We know they have a really good front four. They bring a lot of pressure. Yeah, they can stop the run very well. A really good box. But what can we do in the passing game to open up everything else for our offense? Yeah, I mean, that's true. And you talk about the running game just being non-existent. So the last several games, we've kind of seen that shift going from uh, really run heavy uh, to, to more pass heavy. And, and that, you know, it probably has a lot to do with the quarterback change as well. You know, you go from Meglis to then uh, Gillis. And so we're throwing a ball a little bit more. And, you know, we got to see how really good our running backs were. We had that three-headed monster we talked about early in the season. But now we got to start talking about these young receivers and how good they are. And like you're saying, Khalil, we have to get some opportunities to give them more shots down the field. Uh, they're giving us one-on-one -on -one opportunities to make those throws, and, and Gillis is accurate enough to throw them. And then our defense playing a big part early, getting the stop or getting the necessary stops early on, and then seeing the 80-yard pick six from Diego Brumfield. That really lit a fire under the Tigers. It seemed like for the moment, then it was 10 to seven, we took the lead. But then 21 unanswered points from Georgetown really put a damper on things, got the crowd out of it, and the Tigers just look sluggish ever since. Yeah, a huge play from Diego. He's a really good corner. He's been playing the slot a little bit more, a little uh, hybrid type of safety for us. Uh, so he made a huge play for us, but we just haven't been consistent since then. Uh, again, the turnovers are huge, but we got to keep him out of the end zone. Uh, if we're not going, we got to you know, generate more turnovers for us. Uh, so we got to make some changes on the uh, on the defensive side, stop the run here and there as well. And I think that's where it starts. Yeah, you were talking about the stopping the run, and Georgetown's 
running game has been really good. You know, after that pick six, they kind of was like, oh, hey, the running game's working. Let's go back to that. And they were gashing long runs. And uh, Methodic getting five, six yards of carry, and then they'd break a long one or whatever. And so that's been working for them. And defensively, you know, Campbellsville's going to have to do a better job of, of getting off their initial blocks and then filling the gaps up. And then all of them, when you have the opportunity to tackle in the backfield, you've got to wrap up and you got to make the tackle. So let's give credit where credit's due to this Georgetown running game. Their front, their offensive front has been miraculous, leading the way on a lot of these counter runs, getting things done. Isaiah Cobb has over 100 yards, two touchdowns. Darius Neal, 63 yards and a touchdown. So that's where primarily they've gotten things done on the offensive side where they usually see it get done on the passing side. Yeah, they got a, a lot of experience, offensive linemen. Uh, they have some decent sized guys, but they know what they're doing. They know their scheme and they execute very well with the running backs, their experience as well. And they know how to find those lanes. They have great vision, both of them. And they can also break off some long runs with the speed. Yeah, and they do a great job finishing the play too. Uh, the offensive linemen, we've we've talked about it actually on the, on air, and Colin mentioned it. They're getting down the field and they're blocking the second level and they're going until the whistle blows. You know, that's finishing your blocks. And when you do that, you give running backs opportunities to make plays. And penalties have really hurt the Tigers here early, as you've seen a lot of offsides calls, some holding calls really put a stop to a drive that we thought was getting going and starting to put some points back up on the board. But the Tigers just struggling once again, shooting themselves in the foot. And Georgetown doesn't make those mistakes. So when you see that kind of thing take place, the discrepancy starts to pile up and you can start to see a little bit of that score difference that we're seeing right now. Even, uh, you know, we've heard it all season from Coach Thomas. This is a young team. Even the older guys are a little young too. We started off 2-0, and but a lot of them haven't been in that situation. I don't think you know, many of them have been in that situation before. So everyone was learning. Everyone was learning together. But right now you're seeing a, a lot of those mental mistakes come out on the field. We've seen that all season as well. Get a good drive going, you know, make some yards, get a lot of momentum. And then we have this you know, a stupid penalty, a couple of stupid penalties, pushes us back, and we're never really able to gain momentum after that. Yeah, and, and we talked early in this year about how this, this team was going to be really young and there was going to be some growing pains with this team. And, you know, we got off to a hot start, obviously, in, as far as record goes in the games. Uh, but it's going to take some time with these young players to be in these situations against some of these teams with, that are, you know, filling all these seniors and juniors, upperclassmen, because we're throwing freshmen out there and we're expecting them to play like seniors. And so it's going to be something that they have to learn, and sometimes you learn the hard way, and it builds character for sure. We've certainly been building up this program for a few years now. We're just throwing in a lot of freshmen into the ball game. We don't have very many seniors and juniors but those classes are starting to grow. We're starting to feel a lot more of a set piece when they come out. The lineups are a little bit more set. It's not as many turn, or not as much turnover. Injuries have been an issue because this has been a no bye week situation. So, ten straight weeks of football. What does that do to the body? And you know, we're just seeing it play out. You know, how does that really affect the team? Again, I don't know who made our schedule. I don't know who gave us that early bye week. Injuries have been a huge part of our team in the last few years, never really having a depth we need, uh, never really being able to finish seasons the way we want to finish them. Again, college football is hard. Football it takes a huge toll on the body. It's important to get rest after those games, get rest uh, whenever you can. And I know they're trying to take care of the bodies right now, off on Mondays, you know, getting in some light practice on Sundays as well. Again, you know, that early bye week is really, really tough for us. Yeah, we, I mean, we stand up here and just call the game. Our job's pretty easy but uh 10 straight weeks standing on your feet for three hours hurts my back and my feet so i can only imagine what they feel like playing standing on the sideline getting in you're getting banged up get taking shots straight bass took a hard shot you know like you do that for 10 straight weeks it, you know these guys are young or whatever but that takes a toll on your body i can only imagine and uh you know those injuries obviously has played a part in, in not having some of those older guys too and consistency with the younger players you're in there and then you get hurt and you're out a couple games and you try to go back in and try to find that momentum or find your footing or find your role again and that could be really tough on a player we got to look into what that icy hot was for i guess it's, yeah his back's all messed <laughs> up but we'll step away for our extended break the tigers trail georgetown 35 to 13 we'll be back with second half coverage when we come back 
You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. tell my son I love you every single day and my dad has never said that to me not because he doesn't love me but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him now that he's a grandfather he says I love you to my son every time he sees him my advice to all the fathers out there forget the cultural restrictions they grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment Jason, let's go see your room. My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that I would never be able to get over it and that my kids wouldn't have a father. I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. For the longest time, fear held me back from ultimately being who I wanted to. I had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. It's a dad. Every day is a challenge. To make sure that the time that I have, I spend with them. It doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to try and to teach them. When they learn something new, and you can just see in their faces, it's, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are, that are my favorite.
Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back as the Tigers marching band finishes things up. I was just talking about how good our Tiger marching band is. Pre credit where credit's due. I know President Dr. Hopkins loves our Tiger marching band. A lot of love shown to them and well deserved too. They are fantastic. They do a great job. Congratulations to all of our seniors as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, our band is amazing. Uh, they are a very passionate group. They know what they're doing. You know, they're, they're taught well. Uh, Dr. Bond's over there as well. He's awesome. And again, with the addition of you know, President Hopkins, he's only going to help, you know, try to put more into, you know, our band and, and just everything else you know, we have going on on campus as well. You know, it's a very, it's a school that's growing a lot. You know, facilities, students, and you know, I'm very excited about the direction you know, see you headed and heading in. I'll take a quick second while we have our final home game and just thank everybody that makes this possible uh, for you to see on stream and on our YouTube channel. Uh, Zach Wilson, Jordan Annell, CJ Burgess, Alex Mead, uh, Matt Payton, and all of our students that run CU Sports Network. Uh, they do a fantastic job. Uh, Tori Cox and Eden back in the Auto Smart studio getting things done for the radio side of things, so when we go on the road, just a big thanks to all of them for making things possible and allowing us to give you such great coverage of our Tiger football team and really all of our sports in general. Yeah, talk about you know, you know the school growing. This department has grown so much since I've been in. You know, I came here in 2014, but man, the opportunities here, uh, you know, how much we invest into the students and how much we invest into this side of things, giving, trying to give people a great experience and to experience more of what we can offer. You know, it's a great department. And it's awesome to be a part of it too. And I want to give a shout out as well as you can see on screen if you're following us on stream, honoring the 2022 NAI Women's Wrestling National Champions. They just are a solid program back again at number one this season in the preseason rankings. And it is just a fantastic bro program built by Lee Miracle. Yeah, they're, they're a crazy program just as far as, his, you know, the success, you know, what he's built there. Uh, they're awesome and they work extremely hard. You know, they're a very close-knit group, of course. Uh, they do a lot of team bonding. I know uh, not too long ago they had like a – a very long practice. Uh, I mean, I think it started at like, you know, seven at night and it ended up going on to like, you know, the early mornings and, and afternoons. It's, I know Brett shaking his head, but I can't remember how long the practice was, but it, it's, it's brutal what they do, but they love what they do and you know, they work hard, of course. Yeah, and you talk about a sport where you just have to be on top of everything about your body, like absolutely everything. I mean, when you got to make weight for something, you got to cut weight, then you got to gain weight, then you got to eat, you got to know how much how much you can eat then you gotta work out then you gotta you know work on your technique and like it is it is amazing the things that that a wrestler puts their body through we talk about football and how it takes a toll on your body it's a totally different kind of toll that that wrestling takes on your body and you know our wrestling teams both are you know really good and and uh but our women man talk about a program so much love to all of our Tiger sports teams. We'll get back to football action here and talk about the second half of this game as the Tigers are going to have to get things going as they find themselves trailing number 18, Georgetown, 35 to 13. And teams out there warming up. And 
you have to hope, uh, at least in part, that that scuffle there at the end doesn't carry over into this second half because you could see a lot of high water built back in, and the Tigers don't need any help in that category of penalties that just set them back. You know, at this moment, you almost need to be just reset, get things going. This is not far out of reach by any stretch of the word, and we've seen the Tigers come back from a lot worse than this just in this season. Yeah, I mean, they are a resilient group. We've seen them compete at some pretty high levels. You know, we talk about, you know, uh, we talk about Lindsey Wilson that game, you know, battling with Bethel that game as well. Uh, you know, here, you know, going against an, another top 25 opponent, you know, we haven't seen that same team yet. Uh, and I think we have a chance to see that team. So hopefully, you know, they can get back on that competing side, you know, get some points on the board and also get some stops. And I just think that starts with just stopping the run like we talked about at halftime. You know, Georgetown is kind of doing whatever they want on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, I think, you know, that talking about that scuffle, hopefully it lights a fire in a positive way, you know, uh, you know, for us in Camelsville. And that they kind of come out ready to go on defense and, and ready to kind of make a statement and to say, hey, we're – we're not going anywhere. We talked about trying to make this a fourth quarter game. And so in order to do that, you got to have a really good third quarter here. And, you know, it's possible, but it starts right here uh, with the defense coming out first. Um, it starts right here, and you have to set the tone for this half. Tigers here on senior day trying to knock off number 18 Georgetown. If I'm not mistaken, this is really our first late-night game, minus Lindsey Wilson, of course, but our, especially our first late-night game at home. I guess it's not super late because it started at 6, but nonetheless already carrying into the darker hours. One of the first few times we've really seen the lights on on the field. It, it's a beautiful place at night. Even just looking out, you know, even past the campus, it's really nice. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on on campus as well. Uh, but it, it's a beautiful field. I mean, I, you know, think about the memories I've had playing at night. It's just, there's something different about it. You know, of course, you might want your whole Saturday to yourself and you play an early game, but, you know, the night games are, you know, really special in, in different types of ways. Tigers will kick things off to start. Georgetown will receive as we get things started for the second half of football, but it came off of the tee, but there's no wind. So, <laughs> not really... I guess a ghost blew it off of that the tee. ball scared of Devin Nilly. Yeah, I was about to say, he is not trotting like that to kick the ball down the field, so something's going on. <laughs> we got a dud. I know he's got a strong leg, but I <laughs> like you got to get a little bit more of a running start than that one. So everything is reset. And now we will for real start off the second half. Neely goes through his progression once more. Yeah, he's a thick kid. Oddly enough, I told him that this week, and he said thank you. <laughs> Football players are weird. We're, we're weird. I don't, I don't know. Big I boot from recruits, and I ask them about their size, like how tall they are, how much they weigh. I don't know, man. A little cutback, trying to find some space. A little bit of a patient return, but taken down at the 21-yard line as we get things started here in this second half of football. Tigers defense comes out. What does this Tiger defense need to do? Let's just reiterate some of those adjustments. Stop the run. That's where it starts. Stop the run. And I don't know uh, what those adjustments are going to look like for us. I know we've done a lot of three-man fronts. Uh, we've tried to put people in the gaps, you know, with Abood and Jacoby, you know, trying to put some pressure, uh, trying to shoot those gaps, and it just hasn't worked out. It worked out right before uh, the half ended, of course. But, you know, what can we do to stop the run today? Slewmaker. So Naker hands off. Here's Neely, or Neil, excuse me, as he finds room down the sideline. Now tiptoeing. Brumfield, can he catch him? Gives him one good push from behind and takes him down. But a huge first gain. And talked about stopping the rush. And right off the bat, a rush that went for probably a good 60 or so yards. And that was great on Neil just to take his time. You know, he didn't have the outside at first kind of went back inside playing behind his blockers and then his blockers on the outside was able to contain Anton Fant he couldn't set that edge he's a I mean it's it's a tough thing for him to do and he got the edge and got the got the long game tight set hands off with Neil at front pushing forward once again yeah now even, to the 10 yard line even when we you know kind of get 
contact at, you know, pretty close to the line of scrimmage there. And they're pushing for three, four extra yards every time. Um, we've got to find something within us. Try to keep those to a one to two yard gain. Looks like you might have a cramp down on the field on Kingsville side. That was a 63 yard run from Darius Neal to put them at the 21 yard line in a five yard rush. Six yard yet rush, excuse me. Makes it second and four. We take a look at that 63 yard run and just bouncing through and able to break that tackle. That's number 21, D'Angelo Davenport, who had first contact with that stiff arm, pushed him right off, and he was running free and clear until Brumfield could chase him down. Two back set. It's the first time we've seen this set from Georgetown in this ball game. Sends his man out. Hands off with Cobb. Trying to find the edge. They cover well that time, a gain of two. Third down, big third down for the Tigers. Yeah, but I got to think that Georgetown's going to go for it, and even if it gets to a fourth down. Being so close and having the success they've had, you know, this is four down territory for them. Third and two, ball on the Tiger eight. Cobb. Hands off with Cobb, trying to go up the middle. He's spotted at the six yard line, a gain of two, and that should move the chains, and it will. So first and goal for Georgetown. And it's just hard, uh, you know, to play, you know, football this way, play defense this way. It's not sustainable. You know, they're getting uh, whatever they want to on the, you know, rushing side of it. You know, getting long gains, but also getting those five, six yard gains as well, and just getting a lot of push on the offensive line. Two out wide. Neal to his back. Hands off with Neal. And taken down by number 44, Zamari Bell. Yeah, it was a better job there of, you know, shedding those blocks and coming down and wrapping up and not giving them any extra yards there. So second and five. Second and goal, ball on the five. Has Neal to his right once again. Sunaker drops back, looking for the back corner, and there comes the pass interference as I think Davenport just kind of got mixed up and ran him over as they ran that crossing route. Yeah, just like he just feet got tangled up, I think. And <laughs> that's why I go back to Khalil. I said this, you know, playing DB is just a lose lose. It just, it's so hard to play it. Um, Even incidental contact like that, getting tripped up with a guy. Like yeah, what what can you do? I mean, you're you're trying to run stride for stride with them to cover them, and then if your feet get tangled, you're automatically the the one who fouled. Yeah. <laughs> But if, but if you were to fall, <laughs> you got if you were to fall, you then got scored on. Yep, it's you got tough. you got crossed up. <laughs> That's a real tough call for the Tigers. Is that makes it first and goal, once again since man over to the set for blocking and Neil trying to push over, but the Tigers doing a good job of taking him down. Looks like a yard short of the line of scrimmage, so he'll lose one on the play. And it looks like Grover Russell banged up on the play. Yeah, and he is obviously visibly frustrated. So, like, almost as if he knew he did something. Looks like he's favoring that right arm. It might be the shoulder. So he'll head to the tent. Second and goal ball on the three. Neal directly behind, now moves to the right of Slunaker. Hands off with Neal, pushing forward, and they can't bring him down as he breaks the plane. As Neal picks up his second touchdown of the evening, and he's eclipsed over 100 yards as well. 
between Neal and Cobb. Georgetown is getting it done in the run game, a combined four touchdowns between them and over 200 yards rushing. Yeah, just getting absolutely gashed running the football. You know, so far, nothing, nothing doing as far as adjustments and execution still the same. Extra point up and good. So 42 to 13, Georgetown takes the lead over Campbellsville, 11-42 left in the third quarter. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. The black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no. Back as you just take a look at Neil, patient running, pushing it right up. That front from Georgetown has been spectacular. Just having their way with this Tiger defensive front. And it's hard playing that smash mouth style of football as you talked about. And you just keep getting it ran down your throat almost. It's hard to continue to get out there and keep responding when they're just having their way. Yeah, and, and something's got to give. We talked about it, well, we saw it a lot in the first half, you know, selling out to stop the run and then we're letting something up go in the pass game as, as far as those over the middle post routes, those slant routes. So something's got to give and we got to stop something somewhere and get some something going on the offensive side as well. Tim Pope on the return takes it to the 27 yard line. So Tigers offense get a chance to respond here. Try to put some points on the board. Forty-two to thirteen. This was a passing touchdown team for the offense, anyway, for Georgetown, averaging twenty to seven this season in passing to rushing touchdowns. Four here today. That's another Send low it out snap. To Sturt event, and he'll get out past the thirty at the thirty-one yard line. Gain of four on the play. Second and six. Yeah, and center is a huge adjustment to make, especially if you're just coming over from the defensive line. Uh, favorites, I've talked to him a little bit. He's played, you know, all the positions in high school, but still, you're at the college level now. And it's a big adjustment, and you're having to, you know, get a good snap going, but you also got to go against a guy going in front of you. Hands off with Smith. Smith able to break away. He'll get the first down, and he's tossed down at the 40-yard line. So the Tigers move the chains. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, you're talking about playing center. I mean, no matter what league, you know, what level you're playing at, that center is, is a really, really important position on that offensive line. You know, you talk about the quarterback's blind side being probably the most important position, but a center, you know, you're, you're communicating a lot of the calls and and, and any kind of, of shifts that are taking place. Um, Finds Odin. Now moving to the 45, closer to the 50, he's pushed out. But you know, that's a lot. That's a lot for a, a, a center to, to, to take care of. That's a, not a very good spot if I'm mistaken. Marked him about a yard or two shy from where he was, or at least where he was taken out at. Thought it was more about the 48. Mark oh, the yeah, that's definitely a bad spot. Second and three, a handoff with Smith. Tackle from behind. He'll gain a yard back on the play, third and two. Yeah, I was thinking 49 is kind of where I thought he was. At least that's where his helmet was to me. Maybe not where the ball was. Seemed to be a kind of a bad spot. Ten minutes and just under here in the third quarter. Tigers on their own 48. Hands off with Smith, pushing forward, spinning, and they'll mark him. Looks about half a yard short. Get up there, QB sneak it. I love a good QB sneak. So fourth and inches here. The offense 
Staying out on the field. Ball on their own 49-yard line. <laughs> He'll push forward. And it looks like they'll mark him just past the 50. Ooh, that's close. <laughs> so a first down for the Tigers. As the chains move and the drive stays alive. It's like the best play in football. Oddly QB enough, yeah, sneak. it's... Um, it's like even when you know it's coming. It's hard. It's just hard There's to. There's so many different ways to go. You're getting pushed. They'll hand off with Smith. Smith trying to bounce to the edge and get sliced down by a diving Georgetown defender. Gain a three. Gillis, Smith to his left. Gillis looking for Pope and missed thrown. Oh my goodness. As Pope was cutting inside and Gillis was going out toward the sideline. So an incomplete pass makes it third and seven. Yeah, just some communication on their side. Where, you know, Pope had the step right there and had a chance, but just got to get on the same page. Gillis looks back over to the sideline. Gets the call in, Smith to the left. Rolling to his left. Throws just over the hands of McCown here on the near side. Good pick up from Smith, too, by the way. A Georgetown defender was closing in quick on Gillis on that blind side and able to blow that up and at least give Gillis a chance to get the throw off. Yeah, it's a great job to peel back from him. You know, Georgetown defender got through, almost had that chase down, but Smith was able to help out. We just got to find a connection here. Punt team out there. Lopez, three on the play clock. High punt inside the 15, fair catch. So once again, another punt inside the 20 for Lopez and he'll put the field position, a little bit of a longer field position for Georgetown. Yeah, they've had that a few times this game, but it hasn't really stopped them yeah. from, you know, driving down the field. You know, uh, of course, you know, football is a game of field position, but, you know, not when the, you know, the gap between two teams is so apparent, you know, on the on the field. Slunaker sends Montgomery across. Hands off with Cobb. Davenport steps up and misses the tackle. Able to pick up two, three extra yards. And, and even in that situation, Anton Fant, you know, he takes, he goes inside and he goes for contact there. He needs to set that edge and, and try to, you know, squeeze and contain the best he can. But he goes straight inside and gives the edge to the running back and you know, he gets a really good game. Yeah, obviously you want the running back to stop his feet that actually, as many times as possible. It actually isn't Slunaker in there anymore. I can't get the number on him yet. Try to get that to you. As Cobb pushes up for a first down. It's like 15. It's Caleb Jacob, sophomore quarterback from Covington, Kentucky. He steps in for Slunaker here in a 42-13 ball game. Hard count. They stop and look back toward the sideline. Jacob drops back into the pocket. Throws towards the sideline and has his receiver all day there as he just parked himself up underneath of it at the 50 yard line, Ladarian Montgomery will move the chains for a first down and a lot more. Yeah, safety coming over there. I wasn't sure who that was. Was it? 
it was 21. Davenport. Davenport. Yeah, it just looked like he just never even saw the ball. That probably should have been picked off. That thing was floating in the air for a long time. And I don't guess he ever saw it. Jacob, 24-yard pass to Montgomery. Puts them at the 50. Hands off with Cobb. Dragging the defender for a couple of yards, but a gain of four on the play, second and six. Now into Tiger territory. That was really good run support right there from Nigel. I thought he came in tight. He did a really good job you know, providing that support. Just uh, needs to stop him in his tracks a little bit more. I, I know it's <laughs> the weight difference could be a little bit different, but uh, that was a really good play from him. Montgomery comes back across to the near side. Hands off with Cobb. Pushing forward a yard shy of the first down. Third and one. You know it's your day when we talk about how they make a you know good play as far as stopping the run and, and the running back still gains four yards. <laughs> Hurry up for Georgetown. Now they'll stop and take their time. So third and one ball on the Tiger, 41. Jacob. Hands off of Cobb. Once again, he has a hole. Breaks through past the 30-yard line to the 28 and another first down. Five minutes left here in the third quarter. This is going to be fun to watch back on film. I'll tell you that much. You didn't sound too <laughs> Jacob. static. Has Cobb to his left, sends Adams over. Has his man over the middle, picked off by Antoine Fant. So Fant, Tiger takeaway, Edward Jones giveaway. Thank you, Edward Jones. Antoine Fant picks up his third interception of the year. Might have had that throw if he just doesn't float it up there. Just kind of lob it up there and gave the DB a chance to make a play on it. And Tom Fant does. But if he just kind of throws it in there and delivers a strike, he might be able to get it in there. Take a look back at the replay. Yeah, it throws a little Comes moon Comes across, ball. but that one lofted, just as you mentioned, gives Fant a chance to go up and high point that ball. And now the Tigers' offense will take back over on their own two-yard line. So a little tough field position but at least you stop a score on the defensive side of things. Way to look at the bright side, Colin. I think that's Meglis in the ball game and Pope drops that one. They wanted a pass interference, not gonna get it, but Meglis now into the ball game at quarterback. Senior has been out for a few games and wasn't even showing on the two deep, but able to come out and play here on senior night. Low snap, he picks it up off, and they will believe they'll get a safety. Yeah, I think that knee came down. Yeah. Well, Not Smith's able to get back in the out. End zone too. Smith with a lower injury, lower leg injury, he was holding on. To, it looks like that knee, he got tripped up and took that knee into the turf kind of hard, but a safety. So Georgetown tacks two onto the scoreboard, 44 to 13. That's one of those downsides to starting on the two yard line, even though you got the interception. But I guess if we're still continuing to look at the bright side of things, it's <laughs> two points instead of maybe three. That's a bad uh, or seven. look at the bright side. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, it looks like Smith will be able to stand up but not putting very much weight onto that leg. And yeah, that safety He'll started. He'll be carried you know, off. You know, with the low snap right there, Megalus was trying to hurry up the handoff and then I, they never were able to, you know, connect on it and it was a bobbled handoff and, you know, safety. 
That's one of those tough things, especially with the low snap. You have to pick it up, so that takes time away from your play to develop, gives Georgetown more time to get into your backfield, and they just take advantage of the low snap once again and yeah. able to take down Smith for the safety. Bad snaps when your feet are in your own end zone are not good. You know, they're even backed up in your own territory. Bad snaps are just never good. So they score two points and now get the ball back as well. You hope Smith isn't hurt too bad. Neely punts that one away. It's bobbled but able to fall right back on top of it is Jeremy Adams. So Georgetown gets favorable field position once again on the Georgetown 42 yard line. Tiger defense coming back out onto the field. As they find themselves down 44, 13, 422 left here in the third quarter. Jacob sends Mullins over. Hands off. Pushing up. As he gets to the 49 yard line. That's number 33, Quincy Perrin. 5'10, 215 running back out of Covington. Yeah, they got some good sized running backs here. I, mean, I, I know we've seen a lot of, you know, number 20, Neil, and number two, Cobb, but even number 33 coming out here right now and providing a, a really good spark for his team. Jacob. Hands off. Perrin pushes up for the first down. And the sideline is all over Norris and I, <laughs> I get, you know, there's a lot of things that they call out there on the field and the whole sideline goes up and stands over top of the opposing player. I don't know how that doesn't draw anything, but. Yeah, not a lot of calls have gone our way this game for sure. Or this year. <laughs> Three out to the right on the near side. Deep ball thrown. It's another lofter and can't reel in the catch. Had his man and J.C. Chagog that can't reel it in as it was just out in front of him. Probably should have had it, though. Yeah, <clears throat> Georgetown's quarterback here, he, like, he, he loves a good old moon ball. He likes to throw that moon ball. Whether it's a quick slant or deep post <laughs> or a go route, he is throwing a moon ball. I'm over here trying my best to imagine what a moon ball looks like on a slant route. <laughs> Don't hold A long enough. <laughs> In Madden, you'll find out. Jacob flips Perrin over. Counter run from Perrin. Pushes Ooh. forward for about five. It's getting a little chilly up in this booth. You know, that's one thing about being in Kentucky in October. Well, it gets hot during the day, and then it gets cold when the sun goes down. Third and five on the Tiger, 38. Should be a weather guy, Brett. I don't forecast it. I just react to it, kind of like this game. Jacob hands off with Perrin. And good stop there is Fant. Was there initially. I'm very reactive, Khalil. I'm not very proactive. <laughs> if I was proactive, I'd have a coat in here. <laughs> fourth, fourth down. I'll just complain about it later. <laughs> fourth down, and they'll go for it. Fourth why and not? four. Yeah. Ball on the Tiger, 37. And it looks like. Yeah, bro, just punt it. 
Head coach no Chris Oliver will come out and call the timeout for nope. Georgetown. 153 left in the third quarter. 44-13 Georgetown lead over the Tigers. You're following Tiger football on the CU Sports Network. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how while you will get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back. Defense. Facing a fourth and four, their offense, Georgetown's offense was out on the field before the timeout. We'll see what they do after the timeout. They'll come back out. So Jacob, Georgetown going forward on fourth and four. Big stop opportunity for the Tigers defense. Jacob. Throws. And what a catch made by Frank Ilunga for the touchdown. Good he had to day. come back for it away. And that was really a fingertip grab. He was fast. <laughs> uh, his release was great. And he just... What a Flew right past Nigel. I mean, what a route ran by Ilunga. What a, I mean, okay, I made fun of the quarterback throwing moon balls. He finally throws a bullet, and he throws a back shoulder. And I no, I don't no. even know how the receiver even saw the ball when he turned around. Brett, that wasn't a back shoulder. He, he well, it wasn't a back shoulder. <laughs> it was under throw. <laughs> okay, but I've already made fun of him. I'm just trying to give him, you, you know, a little bit. You and can still make fun of him for that one. But. The, I don't know how he caught that ball. Extra, <laughs> just, uh, like. extra point up and good, 51 to 13, 146 remaining in the third quarter. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? or in how many years do you want to retire to get free action items customized just for you. Get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back as you take a look at that replay there. The ball comes in, stops, turns, and a fingertip grab where the ball was really below his knees. What a catch made by Ilunga and what a route. 51 to 13. Georgetown takes a commanding 38 point lead over Campbellsville. I mean, just even still watching that replay, how in the world do you see the ball to catch it? He's an athlete. Fair catch yes. call. I was going to make a joke about Brett, but I had to stop myself. You're going to say I'm not an athlete. I was not going to say that, Brett. What are you talking about? Tigers will start at the 25-yard line. You think I'd talk about you like that on air, man? Yeah, I'd sure hate to give us give them our one-on-one -on -one basketball record. Who's winning that? Meglis will trot back oh, out okay. onto the field. Oh, you're talking about <laughs> us. I, wasn't, I didn't even think about it, man. Oh. I, I thought the silence was to uh, no, say, don't. okay, shutting up now. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Meglis has trips to his left here on the near side. Pope out and solo up top. Meglis, another low snap, having to pick it up off the turf, now scrambling to his right and overthrows Pope. These low snaps have really been an issue here tonight more than any other night that I can really think of. Yeah, football is a very specific game, and especially when you come to the offensive side, everything is based on timing, especially in the passing game. Timing is so important, and that snap, that low snap just throws everything off. Push forward for a one-yard gain. 
as that is number 41, Terrence Salter, freshman running back, getting some reps in here. Meglis takes the snap. Throws, finds McCown on the sideline, past the 45. Good find from Meglis. Good catch from McCown as well, but there is a flag back in the backfield. And there's a holding. There's Dane Montgomery right there. He uh, pulled, he got bull rush and he just kind of pulled him down. So a minute remaining in the third quarter. It pushes the Tigers back from out past the 45. Back to their own 16 yard line. Yeah, quick little pull down, that shouldn't be a hold. You're not really holding. Third and 19, Meglis. Throws, trying to find Odin, but missed thrown, and that's picked off. Oh boy. Running it back, 10. Meglis puts the hit on him to keep it from being a pick six. Looks like it got tipped a little bit. What do y'all think? I, I would say, I'm not sure, but it looked like. It just looked I, like it came out funky, so it, yeah. just, uh, just, uh, it just didn't come out of his hands right, or uh, the, the ball was tipped. Hunter Kane picks up his second interception, the senior from Newport, Kentucky. Gets the pick and takes it all the way to the Tigers' seven-yard line. Something did look funky, by the way. Look at the replay here. As he throws, I don't, mm, I, can't I, from the angle. I don't really, I don't really know that anybody got a finger on it. I think it might've just been misthrown. I don't know if he expected Odin to run a little more just trying to get straight ahead or <laughs> what, but a timeout taken will take one as well. 51 13, 45 seconds left in the third quarter. You're following Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. Jason, let's go see your room. Welcome back. Tigers trail 51 to 13. Ball on the seven yard line following that interception from Hunter Kane. So first and goal. So we get a different angle on that replay. I, I, I really don't know that that ball got tipped. I don't if know if it's not slipped tipped, that's a or. Big miss. I'm gonna, you know what? I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what angle we get. I am saying that was we a tipped ball. We can reel that back. I mean, it, maybe it looks like it was tipped. Right maybe there. it caught number 52's fingers. Also, this is a that was a great replay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, great job, guys. Shout out to our crew in the control room, and he's pushing forward. Finally, brought down. Lord, that's number 31, Jameer Ackerson, sophomore running back. Pushes forward for a three yard gain. And it looks like they'll come off the field and let the third quarter end. As we head to the fourth quarter, ball will be on the four yard line as we flip sides of the field. 51 to 13 lead. As time expires off the clock, we'll take a break. As we head to the fourth quarter, 51-13, Georgetown leads over the Tigers. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. Hey, Lolo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad? Do stars visit their friends? Look!
Welcome back, senior Jacob Bradley attempting 25-yard field goal. This should be good. Let's go, Jacob. Ball is up. Oh, oh. oh. And it's good. good. <laughs> Bradley socks it from 25 yards oh, out. What a backflip from Jacob Bradley getting it done in the jeans. That was a lot. That was a lot, but good for him, man. My guy. Uh, my Jacob's, boy, Jacob. He's a good guy. I like Jacob a lot. Yes, he very was, good guy. I asked some of my RAs, who, who, who could we find to kick a football right now after the third quarter? And he's like, Michael Lauer says, Jacob Bradley, perfect guy. And he goes down there and nails a 25-yard field goal. Sign him. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Devin Nilly. <laughs> I think his 50-yarder earlier in the season has something to say about that. But anyway, Jacob out there, ready to go from the four-yard line, hands off, and evades the first tackle, but taken down, I believe, by Ladarius Connor. Gain of nothing, ball still on the four-yard line. Third and goal. Defense could come away, perhaps forcing a field goal maybe, or they might just go for it. Really depends, they'll quick switch in personnel. Rolling to the right, quarterback keeper, and Jacob rushes it in, untouched. All right. Yeah, you look across the line, and they was just, as far as the alignment goes, there was just this huge hole covered up there, or not a huge hole open up right there. It's just oof. easy, almost almost like a walkthrough. Just no penetration, no gap integrity, nothing. New kicker out there. It's number 97, Gabe Floyd. Oh, I thought Georgetown might have picked up Jacob. Floyd's extra point is up and good. So that adds another point. 58 to 13. Georgetown leads over the Tigers. 14 11 left in the ball game. You're following Tiger football on the CU Sports Network. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men take care of our home build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. Welcome back. Been all Georgetown here since the halftime break is that was our last score just to make it 28 13 a 33 yarder from Devin Neely and from there Georgetown has scored 30 unanswered points start of it with the fair catch fun fact I'm looking at this sheet right now and Georgetown's left guards name is boots I just wanted to point that out his last name's what? His first name oh, is his Boots. His first name is Boots. His first name is Boots. Boots. Ellet. All right. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. I like it. You know, when the games get like this, well, it's hard to stay up and get up and stay motivated, stay hype. But you know who always stays hype? The band. Yeah. They are hype the whole time. The entire time. They have no quit. Meglis. Love them. Back in shotgun, hands off, up the gut, and good run there on first down, gain of nine. That's number 41, Terrence Salter. The freshman from Madison, Alabama, getting some time here in the third and fourth quarter. Salter once again, Trying to cut around, made several men miss, and able to move the chains. Right. 
Meglis. Hands off with Salter. Pushing forward for a gain of four. Salter once again. Cuts inside. Another gain of four. Third and two on the play. Yeah, I like what Salter's doing. He's getting up uh, upfield in a hurry. And puts his foot on the ground and turns up. Hands off with Salter again. Didn't really have the blocking out front that time. No gain on the rush. Looked like he had some trouble securing the ball as well. Fourth and two. Offense stays out on the field. They bring in Camarion Robinson. Looking for a deep ball. And McCown hold it in. But as soon as he hit the turf, it bounced out. Couldn't contain it through the ground. Man, that hurts. Just kind of how the night goes, you know. So I like to see from the senior quarterback out there jogging up and just gives, you know, a little bit of a high five there to McCown. Of course, they come from the same high school. They were roommates. roommates I don't know now. if they still are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they come from the same high school, same hometown. You know, it could be easy for a quarterback to get mad at his wide receivers, especially when they drop balls. And just I like it from Meglis. A little bit of leadership there. As Jacob hands off. Face mask. I mean, throw the flag. I mean, we th that was an obvious face mask. Number 88 receivers literally grabbing our face mask. It wasn't even just a hold. It was a face mask. Gain of nine for Montrell Page. Now, how do the officials not see that? I feel like they miss a lot of hands, uh, illegal hands to the face, you know, quite often in those situations especially. I mean, good gracious. They're over there on that side. How do you not see? Because I don't know who it was. It might have been for us. I'm guessing it was uh, 45, Duncan, McLennan Duncan was out there, and his face was looking at the sideline, but his body was going this way. Se what way? His body was, oh, yeah, you can't <laughs> second, see some of the radio. <laughs> second and one ball on 37. <laughs> this way, but that way. On you the Tiger 37 as he pushes right up the middle and trucks his way forward all the way to the 25 yard line for a first down and plenty more. Yeah, it doesn't matter who they put back there to run the football. They're getting just big chunks of yardage each, each run that they get. And it all has to do with that offensive line, man. They just have absolutely dominated and owned the line of scrimmage. Jacob and shotgun. Sends his man across. Hands off once again and has a big block out front. Makes one man miss. Now cuts to the corner. And that'll be a touchdown for Robinson. Or I'm sorry, that's not Robinson. That's Montrell Page, number 28. My apologies. Yeah, and in that situation, you see Dante Knox coming up for some, some run support there, but, you know, you can ask him to squeeze. You can ask him to try to get back inside, you know, but he's going up against a, a lineman who's much bigger than he is. It's a, a tough situation, and the rest of the, the flow goes somewhere else. It's just tough. But, you know, on that play, you had the, the guy on the edge that was kind of there, and the running back cut back up. That's when your linebackers have to come downhill. And yeah, they, they need to be scraping over. And, and Extra point downhill. is up and downhill. good. They, they, they waited too late, and it was a safety had to come downhill, and then the safety misses. And then, the, then you know, obviously it's a walk-in touchdown at that point. But it's so hard to 
tackle in open field. <laughs> I mean, you let them get to the second level, it's just so hard. Well, the Georgetown goes up 65 to 13 over CU. We'll be right back with more Tiger football on the CU Sports Network. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Welcome back as Georgetown has just run away with this ball game, 65 to 13, 10, 23 left in the fourth quarter. But it has really been this rushing game between Cobb and Neil Montrell Page getting in on it and Pope. Lucky that it rolls out of bounds. I good gracious wasn't looking at it exactly when it happened, so I'm not exactly sure. But he muffed it. And it hit the ground. <laughs> Luckily, it rolled out of bounds. So Tigers avert disaster as they'll be on their own 20-yard line. But it's been pretty even running from Cobb and Neal. 145 and 135 yards rushing, both with two touchdowns. Montreal Page getting in on the action with a touchdown as well. Meglis throws over the middle. It's deflected, intended for Odin. That goes to the turf, lucky that it wasn't picked off. This is a very senior and junior. This is an upperclassman-led defense. And maybe talk about the difficulties going up, especially as a younger you know, offensive front and a younger core. How difficult is it going up against guys that have played together for three, four years? I mean, you can – first off, you can start with the offensive line and, and our offensive line and, you know, what they've been through and a lot of changes, a lot of injuries even that way. So having a young guys like that, so even favors coming from the defensive side to offensive side, it's just different. Meglis has a man running free. Takes a hit as he throws. Lucky that that wasn't picked off yeah, once again. and. Yeah. In comes the flag. I'm glad we finally got a flag thrown to protect one of our players. Yeah, that was that was a late hit. As Meglis took a shot, and we've seen him take so many hard shots. Once again, roughed up. As he was running free, the ball was well loose, and then still just laid the hit out on him. But yeah, going back to it, like you're going up against a, 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 up against a bunch of guys who have you know been there, who have you know experienced winning as well, and, and know how to execute what they want to do. Meglis keeps it off the option to Salter. Gain of seven on the play. Second and three. Yeah, and you you know you look no further too, and just the, I mean penalties and and things like that you know a, a, a veteran group just doesn't make those mistakes a lot of times they understand that every yard is is crucial Meglis another low snap bobbled off the turf able to find McCown on the sideline for a first down good catch fading out of bounds for McCown that'll move the chains ball on the 48 yard line Picked up off the turf once more. Salter gets out past the 50. Second and four on the Georgetown 46. Meglis rolling right. Looking for Odin. That pass is incomplete. Yeah, another drop pass, uh, really. I mean, obviously, Meglis is throwing at 100 miles an hour, but, you know, that's one of those that, that Owen, I think if you asked him, he'd say, I got to catch that. Meglis 
Meglis pulls, finds Siler, and right through the hands. Another drop pass. Fourth and four on the 46. Offense out there going for it. An empty set. Meglis finds Odin and was that wide or did that go through the arms of Odin? Look like it went through his arms a little bit, but. So another pass. Falls to the turf, and Georgetown will take over on their own 46-yard line. Take a look at some of these stats here as the third down efficiency for Georgetown has been so big, 82%. They're 9 of 11 on third down compared to the Tigers, who is 13%, 2 of 15 on third down. That's a lot of third down situations. Sends a man around and false start on the offense. You know, going back to that, those third downs, I wish we knew the number of, of how many third and fives are, are shorter that Georgetown's had and how many third and eight and longers we've had. I mean, it's probably just jaw dropping the amount of really third and short. Uh, that Georgetown's had and how often we've been backed up and behind the chains because of penalties or lack of execution, things like that. First and 15, back to their 41. Jake, that's not Jacob in there anymore. That's number 18, Jacob Ambergy. Brett, this is uh, our last game of the season, man. It's a bummer. But you know what's around the corner? <laughs> what is that? Basketball season, How baby. It? <laughs> it's around the corner. I don't know what voice you did there. I don't either. Oh, by was the way, it? congrats on your first win the other night. Yeah, we won't talk about today, but <laughs> I did get my first win. Ambergy, uh, hands off. That's number 31. Jameer Ackerson, who's just breaking through and just muscles his way for a first down to the Tigers' 41-yard line. That was second and long. Man. <laughs> At, as of the moment, Campbellsville actually has more plays ran than Georgetown. But Campbellsville, the total yards, 169 total yards for Campbellsville and 524 total yards for Georgetown. And that's how it was last week against Pikeville as far as the plays go. We ran a ton of more plays than Pikeville did, but we just you know, couldn't stop. You know, Pikeville had a lot of big plays and huge plays. scored a lot more points. Hands off. Once again, Ackerson gets another first down. And I say scored a lot more points, even though we had 41 ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just a tough day. Both teams so had over 600 yards. It was a offense. shootout in the mountains. Thought the Hatfields and McCoys were back at it over there in Pikeville. Yeah. No moonshine to be found, though. Only 10 completions also tonight. Only 10 passing completions for Georgetown. Man, they had some big plays there. 131 yards passing total. Their starting quarterback, Slunaker, only with 70 yards. But it has been all rushing as Ackerson once again just stiff arming every man in sight. Yep, ever since that pick six uh, that we had earlier in the first half, we have seen them go pretty much away from that passing game and really just focus on the run, and it's worked out for them a lot. Brett, you called it. Uh, maybe you should go coach for them, too, because you're doing great, man. Yeah. Yeah, I should. I mean, this is bad. <laughs> I've never seen the team just flip to straight up just being one-dimensional. So, and there's, like, literally nothing. That we can't do anything about it. Like, we just can't. It's just we can't do anything about it. They're just they, – they're doing whatever they want. 
they could tell us what we're doing. And, it, you know, it's just that's, what, that's why they're a good team. Ackerson shut down right there. Good job. I believe that's Hayden. Might be Jansen Hayden that made the tackle, I believe. Good job by Hayden to blow that one up. 535 left in the fourth quarter. 16 passing complete or 16 attempts passing. 51 rushing attempts. Only 131 yards passing and 415 yards rushing compared to the Tigers of Campbellsville. 17 net yards rushing. That is a considerable difference. Almost 400 yard difference. He gets flushed out of the pocket. No, nope. there comes the hold as the flag's down. Over there on the side of the field, came from the white hat. The officials have waited too late to start calling stuff on Georgetown. <laughs> Better late than never. That'll bring the ball back to the Tigers' 29-yard line. Third and 15. Just under five minutes remaining in the ball game. Shovel pass, and the defender was there but just the big body of Ackerson to absorb the hit and keep on going. Gosh, I Should have been behind the line of scrimmage, Ooh. but Jason Hayes, the sophomore linebacker, he's listed as a linebacker if that's number. I'm not, I, actually, I'm not even sure who that run was. I thought it was number 35, but that's a linebacker listed, so I'm gonna was assume it 33, that it wasn't. I think, maybe. It might've been 33, yeah, then that's Perrin. 5'10", 215. Two. Just absorbed the hit from Hisong. You talked about that drop we had earlier from Spencer or Brett, you know, being like this will this encapsulates the game. Going for it on fourth and fifteen. Lobs one. Deflected and broken up. Broken up by Tayshawn Key. So turnover on downs. And Campbellsville's offense will head out and take over. I feel like that chance we have to add for a tackle for a loss, we just used Kirby do it. in the back row, couldn't <laughs> do it. And it just feels like it just feels like the, the summary of the game right there, just not able to execute. Mm. 352 left in the fourth quarter. The Tigers will start from their own 29-yard line. Meglis. Gets pushed back by the pile, but gains two or three on the play. It's number 29, Camarion Robertson. Pulls it from Robinson, rolling, throws, looking for Odin. And looks like Odin's holding on to his hip a little bit. As they collided in the air. Odin went down hard into the turf. Yeah, just seeing several guys go down tonight, it's just going back to what we talked about at halftime, just, man, this... 10 straight weeks, dude. And really, we're on nine straight weeks. We're not even got to the 10th yet. That's, I mean, that's just, gosh. That is tough on your body. That's tough on the the weight training staff. That's tough on your athletic trainers. I yeah. mean, it is, it's your just mental. tough. Yeah. I mean. The trainers have gotten their workout tonight as well, trying to take care of these injured Tigers. And, you know, you could try to do as much as you want, try to limit, you know, the physicality of practice or try to 
you know, give an extra day of rest or whatever you may do, but it's still tough when you're coming in night in and night out on pretty much every Saturday of every week of this fall, and you're just getting hit after hit after hit as Sturdivant has it on the screenplay, making a few, ju few a juke hit, moves. Man. That is a late hit on 22. First down for the Tigers. They get out to their own 45. Big pickup for Sturdivant. It's a great block on the outside from Zach Cole. Drove his man out, out of bounds. Say who? Zach Cole. Zach Cole, the tight end. Meglis keeps it himself. Lowers the shoulder, but doesn't get much as John Carter Myers was all over. Two and a half remaining in the ball game. We'll be on the road for the final home or final game of the season, excuse me. Meglis checks down to start of it once again. The blocking from Cole that time just not as good. Couldn't hold off his defender. Start of it drove out of bounds. Third and eight. We'll be on the road at the University of the Cumberlands down in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Be myself, and we haven't fully worked out who's going with me on the road. But you can find us on 88.7, the Tiger, for radio coverage of that ball game. Shovel pass. Gain of three on the play. Yeah, no matter what happens, Colin, you're going to do amazing. Thank I can't wait to have you here. <laughs> Thanks, Khalil. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And as always, you can – we'll have Coach Thomas up here, but as always, you can find, you know, our – more in detail coverage of post game and of the upcoming game on the CU Sports Network YouTube page for the Perry Thomas show when I sit down with Coach Thomas and we have a full discussion. Find a lot of things on the CU Sports Network page that so go for it on fourth and six. Let it rip. From their own 49, throws low to Pope and broken up. Would have been a Tough catch to make anyway. It might have already been skidding on the turf. So a turnover on downs. Georgetown takes over with the final minute. Thank you for joining us on the stream on CamelsvilleTigers.com. Also, if you've joined us on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe for all things Camelsville Athletics. I thought they were. Uh, I thought we were doing running clock for a second. It kept running uh, even after the play was dead. Inside CU Sports, hosted by Khalil Baker. Hey. Who? Me? Can be found on our YouTube page. A lot of great coverage in that one. Yeah, we say it every time, but there's a lot of awesome stuff that we're doing over here and, and just a, a deeper look into, you know, CU sports and what's going on in our programs and with the coaches and the players. So I just am grateful to be a part of it. And hope you guys, you know, tune into all of that stuff. Victory formation for Georgetown as the clock drips away. 65 to 13. Yeah, a lot of stuff next weekend. Obviously, last football game at University of Cumberland's. Uh, us, women's basketball, we will be in McKenzie, Tennessee, where we're playing two games over the weekend. So basketball season is getting kicked off. There's just a lot going on. It seems like every day there's a sporting event of some sort. And so, man, uh, it's a good time to be at Camelzoo. A lot of things going on. I think basketball season should be tipping off, not kicking off. Yeah, this guy yeah. calls himself uh, a basketball coach. Yeah. Yeah. So the clock will run out. Teams go to handshake each other out there on the field. Tigers lose this one 65 to 13 to Georgetown. Georgetown came out with a little bit of an anger as they lost. We talked pregame how they had lost against University of the Cumberlands in a nail biter. Tough one to lose for them and a tough pill to swallow as they were number 11. That loss slid them to number 18. 
and perhaps taking a little bit of their aggression out here tonight against Campbellsville in the final home game of the season. We'll step away for a quick break. When we come back, we'll have post-game coverage. You're following Fighting Tiger Football on the CU Sports Network. <laughs> If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Thank you. Thank you. early when it's more curable if you smoked get scanned talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org welcome back to post game coverage the tigers lose this one 65 to 13 a tough loss this is their seventh loss in a row after starting 2 and 0 they slipped to 0 and 7 in the conference it's been tough teams though against them in the mid south conference i mean every opponent whether they've been ranked or not you know, it's been a tough game to play against, tough game to win. We've been in several games against the number three team in the nation. We've been in tough games against the number six team in the nation, now taking on number 18, and just really couldn't find our ground after it was 10 to seven. They just pulled away and took a lot of the momentum. Yeah, Georgetown, uh, they imposed themselves physically. They were the dominant team. Uh, they won the trenches, and that's where it starts. Line of scrimmage, offensive line, defensive line, did whatever they wanted to. The run game, uh, they did. They kind of went away from it in the first half a little bit, had that pick six we did, and then after that, it was just smooth sailing for them in the run game, and they went straight to that, their bread and butter this game. Yeah, and, you know, we, we talk about how they lost to University of Cumberland, and they are probably a little upset about that. And they came out here motivated, ready to play, and, you know, we had some success early, and then that kind of went out the window. Um, but they just, imp like you said, imposed their will, owned the line of scrimmage. They were finishing plays, um, and, you know, we dealt with injuries and penalties and everything else that could kind of go against us uh, went wrong for us tonight. And, you know, Georgetown, once again, you said it's just the better team, and the better team won tonight handily. We talked about the, some of the team stats and some of the team differentials earlier on, so I won't drudge back into those, but the run game was heavy, big differential on both sides of the ball. The penalties were pretty big coming for Campbellsville a lot more than Georgetown, just as we had talked about in averages, shooting themselves in the foot at times, but then it was really just not able to bring down these physical running backs, people like Isaiah Cobb, who had 145 yards, two touchdowns, and Darius Neal with 135, two touchdowns, and just breaking away for some big plays, and really did didn't have to get things done in the passing game because the run game was so heavily integrated and just had their way doing whatever they wanted. Even in the past few weeks, we've seen CU be able to make some adjust adjustments, uh, whether it be in the second quarter or at halftime, uh, make some changes, even execute just a little bit better of their game plan than it said originally. Here, they were just never really able to grasp that, uh, never really able to make those adjustments, and it just couldn't stop the run at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, what we've said the whole time, it's just been, it was just a running affair uh, tonight for Georgetown. 
and there really wasn't much we could do. Uh, we weren't doing anything to stop us. It's like kind of trying to stop a nosebleed, and it just continues to run and run. No matter how much tissue paper you stuff up your nose, it's just going to continue flowing out. And Georgetown just had it going on the run. It didn't matter who was in the backfield for them. They were, they were you know, creating holes up front in the offense, and then they were finding them and hitting the creases, and they were also finishing those runs as running backs, and they were getting extra two, three yards a pop each time even after contact. I really you know, wish we could have seen some more size just put on the field, especially in those situations where they're getting closer to the end zone. But, you know, we just weren't able to make those adjustments. We weren't able to get that size on the field. But hopefully that's something we can look forward to, you know, going forward. And next week, you know, at last game of the season, how can we end this season hopefully on the winning page? We have been getting it done in the rushing game as of late, but not really able to impose our will in the rushing game. Smith and Bass, the two big backs, only combined for 15 yards rushing tonight. But it was um, – it was Patrick Oden and Tim Pope getting involved in the passing game, but each only respectively with about 57 yards. So not really able to get anything going both ways. It really seemed like things stalled out in the passing game after that first half. Yeah, and I loved our first uh, few couple of drives, honestly. I thought the game plan was really good. Uh, I thought our play calling was really good. Got the ball out quick and some drives, and he came out passing. And we just weren't able to be consistent after that, and then Georgetown made a lot more plays, and that put a lot more pressure on the offense to do a lot more stuff, and we got away from the run game and really wasn't able to do anything in the pass game either because they're bringing four people most of the time, uh, relying on that front to get pressure, but also dropping a lot of guys back in coverage as well so it's hard, hard to find those guys and it's hard to be consistent that way yeah and, and the guy we normally you know we talk about it and when you hear his name called a lot on the radio is, is Siler and you know he didn't have that many targets tonight obviously and uh, you know there was some miscommunication even with with him and, and Gillis a couple of times and you know so just not a lot really going going right. And, and and so we've got a good young receiving core and they're gonna continue to be better. Gill's obviously a young quarterback. And so we can the future is bright, I believe, and we just gotta continue looking towards that as they're building through the season. We'll step away and take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have Coach Thomas in for his post game interview and thoughts right back after this break here on the CU Sports Network. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. It's a dad. Every day is a challenge to make sure that the time that I have, I spend with them. It doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to try and to teach them. When they learn something new and you can just see in their faces, it's, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are, that are my favorite. game coverage of Fighting Tiger football. Tigers lose to Georgetown 65 to 13 in a tough Mid-South Conference matchup. This was a Georgetown team that kind of looked possessed. You know, they looked angry 
after that 24 to 23 loss and they came out the tigers i thought did a good job adjusting early on 10 to 7 you took the lead off the big pick six from brumfield but then after that it just kind of started to slip away and once they got to the second half they just took all momentum yeah i thought that they played an excellent game you know their best game of the season and uh i was telling matt payton before we came on there We've seen a lot of teams' best games, you know, where coaches have said to me after the game, coaches, best we played all year um, for whatever reason, you know, and obviously we have something to do with that. But, um, you know, they, they played really well, you know, and, and it, at some point in the game, it just got to the point where they were just better than us. And then we had some guys going down with injuries. We already had some injuries coming in, had some more go down during the game with the injuries, and things just snowballed from there. Um, and But they're a tremendous football team. I, you know, the most disappointing thing for me was our ability to stop the run tonight. You know, I thought offensively we would struggle blocking them some with the injuries we've had up front, so we kind of got a patchwork offensive line in there. But I thought we could do enough to score a little bit, And uh, but I, I was hoping that we could, you know, stop the run better than we did tonight, and that was an issue. Campbellsville had a hard time getting your own run game going. Right. Smith and Bass only combined for, I believe, 15 yards, mm -hmm. and they had, I believe, 400 more rushing yards, not even having to get it done with the passing game. Their rushing game took full advantage right. between Cobb and Neal going back and forth. And it just seemed like the yards after contact for those two backs, very physical, and they were just bouncing off the Tigers defenders. Well, I think one of the things you see defensively, you get a little worn down. Uh, you have to remember everybody in our secondary, our freshmen, sophomores, mm -hmm. most of the guys in that box are the same. So those young bodies are going to get worn down as the season goes on, but also as the game. And, you know, they're not strong enough yet to just get you down on that first contact. Same thing with our offensive line, and that's why we're struggling uh, running the football now against some teams that were better than the early teams we played. You know, we uh, we got to get better in that box. Those guys uh, are all, other than Ethan Gossage, they're all freshmen, sophomores, and, and they got to get stronger. Uh, Kay Croom's out. You know, one of your starters, Brian Wright, one of your starters out. Um, so those guys have got to get stronger, and we just got to continue to get tougher. And, you know, I finish this year, it's uh, it's been a better year in a lot of ways. But at the same time, it's a challenging year. You know, we're, we're ready to win, and uh, that's the frustrating part. But, you know, it just doesn't happen overnight. We need another recruiting class, and we need another offseason to grow these guys up some. Uh, but we just got to keep coming back and going, chopping that wood and competing. You go on the road to Cumberland's for your final game of the season. What do you do this week to prepare? Well, we got to figure out how to heal up and how to get better while we're healing up, you know, and that's always a challenge for a football coach because football's a physical game. Uh, but we, we will get a plan together and go down there and, and, and figure out a way to compete and try to get a victory to end the season. And, you know, our guys still have the spirit. They still play. They still don't quit on you. Uh, but we have to do some things better, you know, and, and a big part of this week would be film work. Just look, why are we doing this? Why can't we do this? This is what we need to do, that type of stuff. Patch it up a little bit, hopefully get a few guys back out there to play and go finish this year. Well, thank you, Coach Thomas. Yes, thank, thank you all for tuning in to the CU Sports Network. You can catch us on the road on 88.7 The Tiger for coverage. Tigers lose to Georgetown 65-13. to 13. Thanks for following Tiger football here on the CU Sports Network.